Hello friends. Welcome to Muse Fanfiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto blended the Kagaya bloodline with three traits for the ultimate secret ability. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Konoha 8 years after the fox's attack. A young blonde in a dirty, oversized, orange jumpsuit was walking through an alley battered and bloody. He thought he could just head home, but knew that everything he owned in the ratty apartment was going to be destroyed and didn't want to waste what energy he had left cleaning glass, piss, and crap off his uncomfortable bed to sleep when concrete worked just as fine. This was a fun birthday. The blonde thought as he began to wonder why every year he was viciously beaten. He was interrupted by a white-haired, pale man in more ragged clothes than him. Hey boy. The blonde turned braced himself for another beating, but his eyes said you can knock me down, but I will get up. The man saw this, the will to take anything head on clear in the boy's eyes. Relax boy if I wanted to hurt you I would. The boy did when he heard, if I wanted. The boy knew when people meant their words and when they were lying. May I ask what do you want sir? It was barely noticeable, but the man knew this kid was a natural at acting. If the kid didn't add that sir I would have bought he was a polite. This kid has some pride. The man thought and began thinking, how good is this boy? During the four years this man has bummed in the village he noticed how they treated this child and how it was giving him natural skills, survival skills. The child is able to sneak past trained Ambu Ninja and avoid detection while wearing bright orange, set elaborate traps for his pranks, hunt and salvage, and lastly a high threshold for pain. The man personally witnessed that when the mob was beating him and didn't give them the satisfaction of a scream of pain. You remind me of my former clan, but less stupid and hungry for a fight. What was your clan? Unimportant. Why were they beating you? The boy's eyes lit up with hope that someone was caring for him, but dimmed when he realized he didn't know why he was being beaten either. I don't know, but they say I killed their loved ones and I am a monster. The boy looks sad. If you were a monster you would have killed these bastards after the first beating. The man's words reinforced the blonde's already iron will. Kid you're gonna hang out with me my name is Kagaya Kashimaro what's yours? I am Uzumaki Naruto, nice to meet you Kagaya-san. Naruto gave a real smile that made Kashimaro smile back. This kid is special, I can just feel it. The following week they became close Naruto saw Kashimaro as his big brother. He would buy things for Naruto since the blonde wasn't allowed in most stores and started training the boy. While Kashimaro saw Naruto as a son, he didn't know when he started thinking it he figured it was due teaching the kid some taijutsu and how to anticipate an opponent's attack. The kid was already extremely observant of people's actions, but it was actually the fact that he taught Naruto about the Kagaya clan and their idiocy. Kashimaro held no love for his clan's love of death which led to their demise and now he was the only one left. Naruto had asked, why not try and rebuild the clan? Which he replied, I'm sterile so I couldn't even if I wanted to. It was the truth he didn't want to rebuild the clan, but he did want a son to carry on and hopefully make a more peaceful clan. Bone manipulation is very useful and would be useful for the kid. He holds no malice for the village yet the village hates him. I doubt he would be hell bent on revenge if he would gain power, he thought as he believed he found someone who could rebuild a new one. Then why talk about them wouldn't it be better just to forget the past? Naruto asked reflecting on his own life. It is good not to live in the past but you should never forget the lessons they teach. There is a saying. Naruto was actually a smart kid, but has to play dumb in front of the villagers. Those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. The Kagaya looked at the child and smiled. He knew the blonde wasn't stupid. Hopefully it leads me to actually winning a game of shogi. Kashimaro replied with small chuckle. We'll see she Nissan, we'll see. Naruto replied with his own laughter. After a short while of laughter Kashimaro looked deep in thought. Naruto noticed Kashimaro's silence and contemplating look. Shi Nisan, what are you thinking about? Naruto what would you do with power? Without an ounce of hesitation the blonde replied, protect those precious to me in this village. Why protect them? They may hate me, but the Hokage saw something in the village worth protecting and I will protect it for them. Again no hesitation. Why not get revenge? The best revenge against an enemy is to be happy. Naruto stated with the biggest smile he had ever seen. 
The blonde noticed every time he smiled the villagers who hated him got in a bad mood and ruined their own happiness by trying to hurt him. Kid I want to give you my kekai jenke. A shocked expression appeared on Naruto's face. How? I have an idea, but give me two days to prepare and I will meet you at your home. The man smiled and left leaving Naruto to wonder. Two days later at night Naruto had snuck Kashimaro into his apartment avoiding all Anbu eyes. Naruto closed the door and blinds. So how do I get your bloodline trait? Naruto asked. Naruto you're about to undergo an extremely painful process. Kashimaro looked serious as he made that statement. Are you sure you want this? He knew Naruto wasn't a person who wanted power for the sake of power and also someone who wouldn't go back on his word. Cause if so promise me you will protect those precious to you. Naruto nodded as Kashimaro gave a soft smile. Then let us begin. Lie on the bed and raise your shirt to reveal your stomach. Naruto complied as he was instructed. Kashimaro walked to Naruto pulling a small knife, slicing the tips of his fingers on his right hand. Naruto I will now make five cut on your stomach. Naruto nodded and didn't even squirm as he was cut. Unbeknownst to the man the cut were within the outer layer of the seal. He placed his hand on the blonde lining up the cuts. I will now convert my blood to chakra and pump it into your chakra coil, it will hurt. On cue Kashimaro converted his blood focused it into Naruto as the boy slipped into unconsciousness. Naruto's mindscape. Hey kit bout time you showed up. I was beginning to wonder when you were going to say hello. A female voice called out. Naruto found himself in a large sewer in front of a large cage, looking inside only to see two red eyes staring at him. Beautiful eyes. Those two words caught the creature off guard to let out a giggle. Who are you? You could call me your other mother seeing I had an influence on you when you were developing, but who I am is the Kayubi no Kitsune. The Kayubi paused and cringed in expecting the blonde to yell at her. So? That caused tears to swell in the giant fox eyes. B but, I'm the one who, made the, village hate you. Naruto could hear her crying. I know the eyes of vengeful and evil people, your eyes tell me you're neither. A giant smile appeared on the fox's face, so why did you attack the village? The fox let out a sigh and decided to answer. I was controlled by an Uchiha who claimed to be Madara, but I was controlled and ordered to destroy the village. A paw reached out of the cage, grabbed Naruto, and pulled him into a gentle hug. I almost hurt my precious child. Naruto felt the warmth of a hug filled with love and hugged back. So you knew my parents? Yes I was sealed in your mother who was an Uzumaki, but unlike her predecessors her seal didn't keep my power from leaking into you. The other paw rose to stroke his birthmarks which made the boy let out a purr. Su si yu 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 te my little kit purrs ha 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 ha. Naruto pushed her paw and pouted. Ah it's cute, but I have something to talk to you about. She stated as she placed Naruto back on the ground as he looked at the giant fox confused. It is about this Kashimaro giving you his bloodline. The fox lowered her head to be on level with him. How do you know that? The Kayubi's mouth formed a smirk. I'm a part of you so I do know what you're up to. The fox's eyes reflected the boy like mirrors showing changes. His hair now platinum blonde with white highlights, eyes now baby blue with dark blue lining around the pupil, and his birthmarks now highlighted in red. It seems you now have a fourth Keke Genke. Naruto seemed very confused. What do you mean for? Simple due to having this seal placed on you have two chakra based ones. The Kayubi held up two claws. First, because the seal compressed your chakra it made close to the same density of iron. On an adult it wouldn't become genetic, but since it was at such a young age it happened to become natural to you. The fox paused to let it sink in and then continued. Second, is that you have a new affinity. You were just wind through your father's side, kinda funny since he was lightning. Well through circumstances I don't want to go into until you're older you can naturally merge wind, fire, water, and lightning into a jutsu with barely any effort. You can give it a name yourself, but I would name it Hellstorm Release. What aren't you telling me? Naruto yelled at the Kayubi, you know something. Yes, but there is no point in telling you for now so please trust me. Her eyes pleaded not to push the issue any further, so he dropped the subject. So what about the other two Keke Genkes, I know one is bone manipulation. The fox nodded. Yes, but the other is blood manipulation. Naruto looked very confused. How is that? The fox frowned then began to growl in anger. Naruto knew it was directed at someone else. 
Because of the constant amount of blood loss and being constantly poisoned, you on several occasions have stopped yourself from bleeding to death with your will to live. Due to being malnourished your body actual to nourishment from the poison so instead of just iron in your blood it is some form of alloy. You also produce three times the amount of blood so it will appear as if your blood is black. Again a look of confusion appeared on his face. If it appears black and all this other stuff why haven't the doctors said anything? Because they're bastards who have been trying to kill you. Naruto was saddened by the statement Kayubi noticed this and sighed. I am the one who has been healing you when you were hurt, but now you must awaken and bury Kashimaro. Naruto was going to ask what she meant, but before he could he vanished from his mind. Sorry Naruto. Naruto's apartment Naruto's eyes opened to see Kashimaro frozen in place with a smile. She Nisan, are you okay? Naruto noticed he wasn't breathing. The boy was about to cry when he noticed a letter placed on his chest. Dear Naruto if you were reading this then you're alive. I told you once before the Kagaya clan were idiots and in truth I don't even know if this would work, but with your luck and your determination I know you will pull through. It took me years to figure out how to convert my blood to chakra. I have killed four other kids with this process trying to have a son to carry on the clan and when I saw you, I saw my last chance. So this time I poured every ounce of energy into you. So if I am dead destroy my body and create a strong clan for me. See ya, she Nisan, so he was just using me. Naruto felt anger swell inside, but then heard. There is more Naruto, keep reading. And Naruto did see a P's. P. S. Don't let these assholes break your will. You are the strongest person I ever met. Also, eat more vegetables because I know you know how to forage if they don't give you something healthy or resilient. I bought you some new clothes and made you a symbol. Naruto found the clothes. There were a few black shirts, ambu pants adjustable, boot sandals, and a black hooded jacket. He saw the symbol it was the Uzumaki swirl turned into a skull and the jaw was jagged, white bone. It was in the middle of the jacket on the back. After looking at it for a while he returned to the letter. Hide them until you want to wear them and hide your new power because they will fear you. Be safe kid, just promise that you will survive. I will Nissan. Naruto let a few tears drop on the page. Kit you need to destroy the letter and Kashimaro, hide your new gear, conceal your powers, and let us start coming up with a training regimen. Naruto knew what she wanted, but found it hard to even think about destroying Kashimaro. W.Y. Do I have to? He knew why, but he didn't want to destroy anything he cared about. If someone found the letter they would find out about your new bloodline and force you to marry some sluts who don't love, and if you keep or bury a dead body they may try to pin murder on you. I know it is hard to let go, but you have to. I know I have to. I just needed to hear it. Naruto quickly burned the letter and came up with a plan to dispose of the body in the forest of death. Outside the forest death Naruto found it harder than normal trying to sneak around the village with a dead body. It was mostly due to nerves, he has snuck around with heavier things for pranks. The forest has been his training ground for his stealth skills because his exact thoughts were, if I can survive here nothing the villagers do can hurt me. That was two years ago and it has improved his secret jutsu. Kit there may be something here that can break down his body, but you'll still need to hide his body. The Kayubi made a point about not just leaving a dead body near the entrance. He'll have to place it somewhere within the forest. I'll drop it near the nest of acid slugs give enough time they should do the trick. Naruto whispered hoping no one was around. You know you just have to think talk to me right? Naruto nearly slapped himself in the face but stopped in fearing that it would be heard. It took him 30 minutes to locate the nest and an hour to wait until it was safe to implant the body into the nest. Are you going to say a few words? No, he knew I thought of him as a brother. So he knows that he will be in my heart because Kashimaro was one of the few people who treated me like a person. Tears began to form, but were forced back. But I will not give in to sadness because she Nisan would want me to be strong. Naruto made his way back to the entrance it took him longer to get the entrance as many creatures began to wake up and the new traps on his detour didn't help. Who sets up these traps? Naruto thought in a mix of marvel and terror as he avoided them. He made it out virtually unscathed just in time to see the sunrise. He took a deep breath and started walking forward only to be stopped by a dango stick. So you're the one who has been setting off my traps, mumbled a feminine voice. Naruto froze. Did she see me? was the number one thought going through his head. He turned to see an attractive woman with purple hair in a beige jacket, orange miniskirt, and possible revealing see-through shirt. 
The jacket seemed to perfectly hide where the nipples are. Not surprising it is you Naruto. He was shocked that she knew his name. Most adult just called him horrible names. Don't look surprised kid you're very famous to the shinobi especially the Anbu. Why am I famous? Shock was still on his face not knowing whether to be honored or scared that the ninjas took an interest in him. It didn't go unnoticed and now she was torn between teasing him and getting him to relax. In the end she decided to flip a coin. Heads I tease, tails I don't. Naruto just watched the woman pull out a coin, flip it, and get a disappointed look. I really wanted to tease him. Well my orange gaki you are famous for two good reasons and one bad one. Holding up a finger for each one. One for you elaborate pranks that even some Anbu find hard to avoid. 2. Eluding almost all trackers sent after you. You know I lost a bit of money betting I could find you before Aruka. Naruto started scratching the back of his head. Aruka only finds him because he has been the only one who took the time to hang out with Naruto and get to know him, well as much as Naruto let him know. Were those the good reasons? The blonde air quoted because those seem like reasons to be pissed. Yeah we had to step up our game if we couldn't locate a kid. She gave a smile that put him at ease. So what is the bad reason? She pointed at him with a smirk. That ugly jumpsuit. She started laughing so hard that she didn't notice Naruto's face. He knew it was an eyesore, but that was the only thing he was allowed to buy because it was. By the time she was done he had already got over it. It finally hit him who this woman was. The don't give a shit how it makes you feel attitude, the provocative clothes, the piles of dango sticks, and some stuck in the tree. Anko, the snake mistress of the leaf village, she gave a mock bow and smiled. You forgot why and single, but I forgive you if you buy me some more dangos and tell me how you're so stealthy in that. Anko gestured towards his jumpsuit again. Kit, get her to train you. The fox interjected, what? Why should I? Naruto didn't realize that he said that out loud. It made Anko smirk, Kids got balls maybe I should threaten to cut them off, no too drastic. While Anko, was running through ideas on how to gently persuade the kid to give her free food. Naruto was having a conversation with his inner demon. Because if you get proper training you can become an extremely powerful shinobi, even Hokage like your idol the fourth, minus the dying part, it did sound appealing to Naruto. Also, if you are taught some good jutsus you can use them as bases for your bloodline justice you will create. The Kayubi had motives one get Naruto to speak his mind more and not fear backlash, and two have the skills to back it up. Good points. Naruto came out of his conversation to see Anko in deep thought. Anko-san. Anko was close to figuring out a good threat when he interrupted. I will buy you your dangos for your forgiveness, but for how I sneak past trained Anbu I wish to be your student sensei. Kid doesn't like giving respect, I like this gaki. All I can say is, let's talk after breakfast. Suddenly her arm snaked around the young, now platinum blonde, and dragged him off to the nearest dango stand. Heading through town while being dragged through town that was slowly becoming awake, Naruto noticed confused looks, like people couldn't recognize him. Anko noticed this. She has been on shift to protect the elusive former golden blonde from the vengeful villager and decided to get him a temporary disguise. Detouring from her objective to buy some clothes for the boy and the only place that opened early was a ninja shop. It took a couple of hours because some of the clothes had to be tailored since the average genin was 12. Anko bought him a black bandana, gray cargo pants, a black muscle shirt, black sandals, and an oversized primary black and orange coat, with white fur around the collar, and red fangs on the back, an. Looks like Shino's jacket but with a fur collar. After he was changed Anko burned the jumpsuit and said never again. Now you look like an Inazuka. The bandana covering his hair and with his now red whisker marks he could pass as one of their clan members. The jacket covered his clothes and almost touched the ground, now no one could recognize him. This gives me some ideas. A mischievous smirk appeared on his that Anko simple ignored with a smile. At least I don't have to wait till I'm like 16 to wear this jacket. Thanks Anko-san. You're welcome Kuma-kun. Naruto knew that during the rest of the day he will be referred to as Kuma. At the dango stand Anko had the biggest smile as she drew closer. He Anko San. How is the only person who could put away my entire supply of dangos? The vendor called out. Wiping some drool from her mouth. I'm surprised there isn't a line for these beauties yet. How can anyone be so drawn to food? Naruto thought to himself. That is a watered down version of how you get about ramen. 
The fox snickered as Naruto pouted. Not many people eat them religiously throughout the day. Why is that? The vendor man asked. I do that for a reason because ramen. Naruto clenched his fist with fire in his and blurted out. It is the food of Kami. In his head the fox was laughing her ass off. Anko was in total agreement. The vendor took the compliment from the boy, and Naruto was just embarrassed and pulled up his collar. Just for that passionate comment here are two on the house. The man then produced two dango stick baskets one for him and the other for Anko. She gave him a slap on the back and a grin that said good job. You still need to buy me some more. Naruto sighed as he pulled out a dirty green frog wallet pulled out some money and placed it in the vendor's hand. It took a minute as the man made some more and handed him three more baskets. Naruto was shocked that the man actually gave him three good looking baskets and not just one crappy one, but didn't let it show and just thanked him. They took their dangos to the nearest bench to enjoy. It wasn't bad for the first time eating dangos. Not as good as ramen, but still good. He thought as he munched and tossed the stick. Now Anko-san are you going to train me or not? A smirk graced her face, but before she could respond a voice interrupted. I have no interest in you, so. Leave. Me. A-L-O-O-O-N-E. A girl with red fangs on her cheeks, long brown hair, that looked at least twelve yelling at a boy leading two others. The boy had a smug look on his face along with red fangs on his cheeks and a red paw mark on his forehead. The other two were just ass kissers, with the red fangs, pumping up his ego. Oh Hannah, you know that you're my bitch, so why don't you just be good and come here? He just pissed of Hannah, Naruto, and Anko. Anko decided to test Naruto's skills. The three boys were from the Inazuka clan along with a girl named Hannah, and all four were genin. If the Gaki can run through the forest of death he has to have some skill. Anko leaned in close to Naruto and said, why don't you go defend the girl's honor and then we will start your training. Naruto looked concerned. If I attack them I'll get punished. Naruto whispered to the purple-haired woman, who just smiled. Uzumaki Naruto would get punished, but Inazuka Kuma isn't under the civilian council jurisdiction. A smirk appeared on his face and then turned into a full-blown smile. He really wanted to beat the crap out of those smug boys. Naruto nodded, got up and walked to the arguing genins. Your dad tried to court mom, but didn't have the balls, so why'd I want to mess with the weak offspring? Hannah jab hit the mark when the boy's face became red with anger. Hannah steadied herself to dodge the attack that should have came, but heard a crash as the 13-year-old boy was tossed into a trash can by an 8-year-old. The boy's cronies were shocked as well as Hannah and Anko who for a split second lost sight of the platinum blonde until he threw the older in Azuka. It wasn't speed it was like he vanished from all senses. Hannah was surprised that this kid was able to get the jump on members of the best tracking clan in the village. But when she saw the red fangs on the back of his jacket, must be an Inazuka, but that isn't our fighting style, she thought as she watched the unknown boy fight. The other boys charged at Naruto, and with their boss out cold in the trash, can their confidence was shot. Naruto felt a twinge of pain in his hand before connecting to one of the boys' face, effectively breaking his jaw and sending him flying. Naruto then felt another twinge in his foot as he spun dodging the other's clawed swipe at his head and continued to deliver a kick to the Inazuka's stomach which just made him crumble. She Nisan thanks for taijutsu lessons. You shouldn't bother the girl if you can't handle her alone. Hannah smiled at him for acknowledging that she could have beaten them herself. Naruto was smiling because it felt great to protect someone who was grateful. Thanks for the assist kid. Hannah painted his head. What's your name? Naruto was about to give his name when his inner voice spoke. Remember you are not, Naruto, at this moment kid, or should I say cub? The fox laughed at her own lame joke. You are Kuma. My name is Inazuka Kuma. Naruto stated and looked for Anko, that seemed long gone. Where did she go and did she eat four baskets? Naruto was a bit angry that the person who promised to train him just up and left. Naruto decided to leave also, but was stopped by Hana. Where are you heading? Naruto froze. I was heading home. Hana put an arm around Naruto's shoulder. Since you were heading to the compound mind if we stop at our clan's pet shop, gotta pick up some food for our partners. On cue a puppy emerged from her coat. She was wearing a sleeveless jacket, an. Like Kiba's jacket, but sleeveless. A medium, black skirt, black tights underneath, and gray sandals. The puppy gave two barks in hello. Naruto submitted to the Inazuka's suggestion and walked with Hana while wondering, where the hell did Anko go? 
Few minutes later Naruto and Hana walked in relatively comfortable silence. Hana was in a conversation with her puppy Onimaru. He was a little wolf cub who liked to bug the hell out of the others and would fight Fang and Claw to avoid a bath. So we talked about me and the little Oni, she said as she scratched the puppy's ears. But what about you, I mean I haven't seen you around the compound, so tell me about yourself. During the silence Naruto gave this subject some thought and ran it by an editor. I am an orphan and have been cared for by Kagaya Kashimaro. He took care of me outside the village, knowledge, and only recently came home, from burying him. Hana looked saddened about bringing up something painful for Kuma, but wanted to get to know the kid and pushed forward. Naruto didn't like lying to her but it was necessary. So do you live with him or do you live at the compound now? He sighed then spoke to her again. Neither. She Nissan died recently, last night. I haven't met the clan's head and discussed living in the compound, but I plan to. Naruto did plan on discussing being trained by the clan heads since the shinobi haven't been involved with his mistreatment except for the Hyuga and Uchiha clans. The only ones from those clans he would think about talking to was Itachi who would stop by to talk and say Naruto should meet his sibling, and Hinata, but she can't seem to talk whenever he is around. Well when she hears how you helped out her daughter against a few idiots, she probably let you live with us. Naruto was so shocked that the girl next to him was an heiress that he stopped as Hana continued to the shop's door. As she held it open she looked back at Naruto and said, Are you coming Kuma? It took Naruto a little while to register she was taking to him. He then nodded and followed her inside. In another location, what do you want Anko-chan? A woman asked wearing John in attire. Anko smiled as she walked closer to her friend. Sume-chan first I would like you to make sure we're alone please. Sume sighed and told her partners to secure the area and after a while she heard confirming howls, we're alone. Good now to business. Anko cleared her throat. I would like Naruto to live with you. Sume let out another sigh. It is not like the clans haven't tried. She folded one arm underneath her chest and the other was up holding fingers to count them off. We were stopped by the civilian council saying they don't want the demon to access his animal side. Abarame clan wanted to, but knew the Kyubi's chakra could harm their insect and need to keep the bugs happy. Nara clan's head is married to a bossy civilian who would throw a fit. Hyuga clan's elders stopped that idea when they told Hiyashi that they would place a caged bird seal to keep Naruto in line. The Yamanaka clan was also stopped by the civilian council saying if the boy messed up one of their mind jutsu the demon could take control, and the Uchihas were stopped by Hokage-sama for some reason, but probably because they would mistreat as well. Sume was pissed that the people who knew of Naruto's sacrifice couldn't care for or help him. Anko had a mischievous grin. Well luckily you're not taking in, Naruto, you are taking in Kuma. Sume looked confused. The kid now looks like an Inazuka with my help. Plus the kid already came up with a slight backstory that could be believable and I will also help train him scene I kinda promised him I would if he helped your daughter. Anko handed her a notepad with what Naruto said about his disguises past. So will you do it? Sume nodded with a smile. Yes I will, but he has to come to me and ask. No problem as we speak your daughter is bringing him to your compound. You know how Inazuka girls are. They both chuckled at the joke. So I will go meet this Inazuka Kagaya Kuma once he arrives there, thank you Anko-chan. No need to thank me I do what I want to do. With that Anko left and so did Sume as she whistled for her wolves. Naruto a few blocks away from the compound Naruto was really nervous about meeting a clan head and hoped that she wouldn't simple turn him in for impersonating one of them. Hana could see he was nervous. This is probably the first time he is meeting someone of importance. You don't have to worry about meeting Ka-san. As long as you show backbone and morals like earlier she'll like you. Why does it feel like I'm taking my boyfriend to meet my Ka-san? Naruto was letting Hana guide him as he dragged the cart he decided to talk to Q-chan. So I'm meeting a clan head under an alias Anko came up with, after helping the heiress Anko told me to help, it seems like she kind of planned this out. You may just be paranoid cubby-kun it could be your unnatural luck that led you here. The Kyubi snickered at her new nickname for Naruto or Kuma as it was. If I was lucky I would be living a much better life than I have been living, and stop calling me cubby. If I called you kitty you'd be a cat and if you weren't lucky you'd be dead long ago Sochi, that caught both of them off guard. Kayubi had always wanted to call him Sochi, but since they only started talking last night she felt that she didn't have the right to. 
Naruto felt happy and warm on the inside because he craved any form love or attention and in the short time they'd known, each he felt nothing but love from her since she hugged him. If, you want to, the fox's eyes lit up. You can, see call me Sochi. Will you call me Ka-san? Her tails were swaying like crazy at the thought. No not yet, but maybe I will, soon Kyu chan It wasn't what she wanted, but it still made her happy. I will and I'm still going to call you Cubby Kun as long as you're Kuma. She laughed and before he could reply he noticed he was inside the Inazuka compound. It was pretty rowdy seeing kids wrestling, dogs and wolves running around, and the adults sparring. Hannah grabbed hold of the cart and brought it to the kennel where another Inazuka took it. It didn't take long for someone to ask is that your boyfriend making Hannah blush and quickly dragged the young blonde off to her mother. Hannah's home. Ka-san, you home. Hannah called out and a few minutes later a woman with short wild brown hair, red fangs on both cheeks, eyes were slits, and had dark purple lips. You're home from your little trip. Anything interesting happened? Sume already knew what had happened thanks to Anko's notes. Hannah ran through the day and when she got to the fight she had a blush that didn't go unnoticed by her mother. My little girl likes the hero type. So you're Kuma I heard about you from Anko, I'm Sume by the way. Sume gave a reassuring feral smile. Naruto bowed and when his face was out of view it relaxed. It is nice to meet you in Azuka sama I would like to discuss living in the compound. Sume smiled at his formality then looked at her daughter. Would you give us some privacy? It was a command more than a question and Hannah reluctantly left. Kuma or should I say Naruto, Naruto stood, but didn't look shocked that she knew it was him. 1. She already said Anko told her about him and two clan heads tend to be the most skilled of their clan. He really didn't think he could fool one. I have some papers for you to sign in Kuma's name. Also, besides me and Anko there are two others who know about this. One is Hokage-sama since he can make your alias have a legal identity, but wants you to go back to being Naruto once you make Chunin so you'll be under Shinobi Council instead of civilian. The second is Hitaki Kakashi who also wants to train you for some reason. She turned, grabbed some books and a scroll, and handed them to Naruto. He looked over the books most were for Fuenjutsu ranging from basic to advance and two were about chakra control. The scroll had a seal that said to unlock channel chakra through the seal. Naruto looked at Sume with a confused look. Why wait until I am a chunin and not just genin? Genin are partially under the civilian council so they could revoke your status if you're not chunin or above. Start reading the chakra control books so you can open that before the end of the month when Kakashi and Anko get back from their mission but from now until you're Chunin you're living here. Welcome to the family. It took an hour to fill out all those forms and Naruto was dead tired and hungry. He had no sleep, ran through the forest of death, and had a small basket of dangos, and a small fight with three older boys. He just wanted to sleep for a while. He grabbed the forms and headed to the kitchen. Sume had on a pink apron instead of her Jonin jacket and looked like she was cooking, smelled like it too. You finished the paperwork? She spoke without even turning around to look. Naruto said yes and set them on the table. Good, Hannah Chan took Oni on a run with her two older partners and my Sochi Kiba kun is out training with Akamaru so they'll be home later. Sume grabbed a plate. You'll be bunking with him, so after you eat I'll take you to the room and you can take a nap. She turned around with an omelet in her hand and set it on the table. But maybe you should dye your hair before that cause you can't wear a bandana 24-7, now sit down and eat. Naruto felt forced to comply with her command and did just that. Sume grabbed the documents and whistled. Now Kuma I would like you to meet Kuromaru. A big dark blue and gray wolf with an eye patch came in and scowled at Naruto. Wow, he likes you. He is giving me the evil eye. Sume chuckled at the unintentional jab at her partner. That look is his smile to strangers. She placed the papers in a canister and Kuromaru took it in his mouth. Take that to the Hokage. With a nod of the wolf's head he ran off. Naruto had just shoveled the last of the omelette into his mouth and swallowed wondering if he could still call him Gigi or if he wanted to after keeping the secret of Kyu-chan from him. So what room is Kiba's? She looked at Naruto and then the plate. You gonna put that plate away first? It was more of a command than a question. A sweat drop form on Naruto as he nodded and put it in the sink. Good. Now the bathroom is located upstairs third door on the left. Sume walked to her jacket and pulled out a hair dye kit. Anko Chan slipped this in my pocket before leaving, use it. She tossed it and he caught it with a confused look. 
Fine I'll help you just get washed up and I'll be in there in a little bit. Now get. The bathroom few minutes later to Naruto it was great to get in a bath with actual hot water. Some hookers used to let him use theirs until the landlord found out and threatened to shut off their hot water. This feels great. Remember to wash behind your ears. Yeah yeah, you know what I just realized? What, that you don't have any spare clothes? That and that I have to get some stuff from my apartment. Like what? Before he could answer the door opened and Sume walked in. She expected him to scramble in embarrassment like Kiba when he forgets his washcloth, but he just looked at her as she held a stack of clothes in the kit. So what will my hair color be? He asked with mock interest since all Inazuka clan members had brown hair. Well Gaki you seem comfortable being naked around women. She placed the clothes on the counter and walked to Naruto. Hope you don't mind being a brunette. It took 40 minutes to dye his hair. That was relaxing, thank you Soon chan Kinda quick to use an affectionate endings are you. You have taken me in, fed me, and now are seeing me naked so it is called for. Naruto stood out the bath, walked past Sume, dried off, and got changed. He was wearing Kiba's clothes a black short-sleeved shirt and gray shorts. So where's his room? Right two doors down Kuma and don't sleep all day. I already miss my name. With that thought he left the bathroom. If it weren't for his eyes, the red whiskers, and the fact he's bigger, he could pass as Kiba's twin. Naruto's mindscape. Hey Sochi kun. The familiar voice of the fox called. Q chan. I am trying to sleep what do you want? Naruto whined as he rubbed his eyes. That's the beauty of this place, although this place is a sewer. Being here is like dreaming so when you leave you'll be well rested. Now remember those twinges of pain. Naruto nodded. Well that was your bones reconstructing. Your bones reshaped to make your attacks more effective. Naruto remembered how each boy fell after one strike. So they got the ass kicking they deserved. You could have killed those boys. Naruto was shocked he didn't want to kill them just teach them a lesson. I want you to train that response to be a conscious response instead of subconscious. Yes Q chan The female fox smiled and reached out from the cage to stroke Naruto's cheek making him purr. Good let us start chakra control training so you can open that scroll. How are we going to train and if we can why not start with the bone thing? The giant fox rolled her eyes. First, everything about a shinobi comes down to chakra control and opening that scroll will help. Second, here you can train, but can't do any physical training. She clapped her massive paws and smiled down at Naruto. So why don't you walk up these bars? How Q Chan. The Kyubi let an audible sigh. Chakra can be used to preform jutsus, increase physical attacks, and used to scale walls and walk on water. Climbing these bars, she tapped a bar with her claw. Is the first step to walk on water. Now think of your chakra as explosive glue. Too little you don't stick, too much and you shoot right off. Now begin. Yes Q Chan. With that Naruto ran towards the cage. Sometime in the afternoon waking from mental training he made it up halfway and was close to finding the right amount of chakra. The fox was surprised at how quick he picked up on it. Not only did he make it halfway, but he did it without calling on a full percentage of his chakra. She knew Naruto was smarter than he let on in public or even to people close to which were few, but he caught on quick. If he wasn't being hinder he could go farther than anyone could even imagine. The fox was right about it being like dreaming, he felt relatively well rested. What he wasn't expecting was a small white puppy staring him in his face. Hey, Akuma is it? Yeah and this must be Akamaru, so you must be Kiba. Naruto turned his head towards the door to see a boy with brown hair, the red fangs, wearing a beige long sleeve shirt, and gray shorts. Yeah I am and that's my bed. The Inazuka pointed with a possessive look. Well Sume chan said I could take a nap in here. Naruto sat up as Akamaru leapt off his chest. Those are my clothes Kasan. After few minutes Sume was behind Kiba along with Kuromaru with an annoyed look. Why is he here? Sume had a sweat drop and rubbed the back of her head as she forgot to tell her kids that Naruto was going to be living with them. Few seconds later Hana showed up to check what Kiba was yelling about. Hey Kuma. What are you doing here? Hana slightly blushed and couldn't meet his baby blue eyes. Hey Hana san. Sume chan didn't tell you too? Naruto looked at them with an inquisitive expression. Hana became jealous about the fact that her Ka san got the affectionate ending and she didn't. Kiba voiced his own opinion. Don't hit on my Ka-san. You may have helped my O-N-E-E-C-H-A-N, 
But that doesn't mean I like you. Kiba was a grade, a mama's boy seeing he had her brown slit eyes. Naruto rolled his eyes. Calm down pup Kuma will be living with us and now since he is awake why don't you show him around? Kiba gave a defeated sigh while Hannah turned and gave a victorious smile to the gray puppy in her jacket. Fine, come on Kuma. Kiba walked out followed by Akamaru and Naruto. Hana turned to Sume. Why did he call you Sume chan ka san? Sume looked at her daughter with a smirk. His exact words were, You have taken me in, fed me, and now are seeing me naked so it is called for. She chuckled as she left Hana with an obvious look of jealousy. Kiba and Kuma, walking around for an hour, and those are our clan's personal training grounds. Kiba was still a bit annoyed. At what age do you get your partner? Naruto was trying to have a friendly conversation with him. It's up to the parents. Some don't allow their children because they're too prideful to rely on a partner or don't think they can handle the responsibility. Kiba got over what happened earlier if barely, but what was eating at him was that he had the feeling he knew Kumo and couldn't place it. That's him Oto-san, the one with the red whiskers. Naruto and Kiba turned to see the boy from earlier followed by a tall, fairly muscular, shirtless Inazuka man with giant red claw on his chest. He's the one who attacked us. The man looked at Naruto then struck his son. You got beat by a pup younger than you shameful, but I can't let someone disrespect my family. He then pointed Naruto. You're going to apologize to my boy and you, he then pointed to Kiba. Are going to tell Hannah that Kuzo will pick her up at seven. Now that is a prime example of overly prideful. Kuma meet the scavenger family Kuzon and his Sochi Kuzo. I met Kuzo earlier didn't care to get his name when I tossed him and I can tell the only thing big on Kuzon is his ego. Naruto's jab hit to close for Kuzon's liking and it didn't help that many Inazuka members who heard it had started laughing. You little bastard all. Kuzon was about to verbally try and put Naruto in his place, but was cut off by Naruto. I know your type. Can't fight the big dogs so you get your ego boost from taking scraps from pups and beating them to try to make them fear you probably why you can't get one of these dogs to be loyal to someone so weak. Now everyone was laughing at the fact the little boy had hit the nail on the head and it made Kuzan pissed. You little fucker I'll show you who's weak. Before he could dash at Naruto, Kuromaru and three grey puppies appeared one was Onimaru. Few seconds later Hana and Sume appeared. This is embarrassing for Yukuzo seeing Yuroto san being put in his place and Yukuzan Baka trying to fight a kid how low can you go? That Gaki needs to learn respect. You need to grow a pair. Naruto interjected. Your lucky Sume sama is here protecting your ass. Kuzan tried to intimidate Naruto. Fine, Sume chan I wish to fight him. Sume looked at Naruto and smiled a bit. Are you sure Kuma? Even though his is a weakling, he is low chunin level. Sume stated not seeing an ounce of hesitation. He is still a set it up. Kuzan was getting more and more pissed as Naruto talked. Fine training grounds 10 minutes get whatever you need ready. With that the crowd dispersed as people could be heard making bets. Kuma, Sochi, come here. They both complied. How did this escalate? Because he's an ass and thinks too highly of himself. Naruto was agitated to say the least. Like the attitude cubby kun but are you sure you haven't bit off more than you can chew? Waking from her nap after helping with his training. I can't stand people like him. The mob that came for him was made up of nothing but people like Kuzan and those who couldn't grieve. Like the attitude Gaki, but did you bite off more than you can chew? Sume asked as Naruto chuckled. He disrespects Hana san by implying that she would date that coward of a boy he has. Hana was slightly blushing at his words though it went unnoticed by the boy, but not Sume. Kiba was growing to like Kuma. Then let us prepare for your fight. Hope you know what you're doing Naruto. Ten minutes later. Everyone who was interested in the fight gathered in the clearing that was their training grounds. There were four trees in the clearing surrounded by a forest. Sume was in between Naruto and Kuzan who were standing in the center of the field. Welcome everyone to a friendly little spar between Inazuka Kagaya Kuma. Some cheers were heard from those who betted on him and from Kiba and Hana and Inazuka Kuzan. A mix of boos and wimpish cheers. Now I am the proctor of this fight so I will call the match understood. Sume received nods from them both. Okay begin. Kuzan closed the gap quickly and thought that if he landed one hit it would end this insult on his pride. Naruto saw the wheels turning and spaced his feet to balance himself. Kuzan swung his hand in order directly into Naruto's face. 
Naruto again felt the twinge in both of his hands as they grasped the arm whipping him over his shoulder. The Inazuka contorted his body to land on all four instead of his back. He scowled at the fact he was thrown by an eight-year-old with little effort. He didn't let the boy enjoy the small victory as he closed the gap again. Swiping in close combat as Naruto either blocked or dodged the attacks. He couldn't get through Naruto's defenses. You have given up on training have you Kuzan? Shut up brat. Kuzan started attacking faster and a bit sloppier. He swung wildly with his left. Naruto ducked under and jumped forward delivering a solid blow to his kidney before Kuzan backpedaled. Is it because too many people have beaten you to the point you've given up? In the stance Kashimaro taught him. Four legs technique. Chakra enveloped Kuzan's body as his nails became claws, eyes became feral, and his teeth turned to fangs. The speed increase was obvious along with an increase in strength as the assault began once again. None of his attacks were landing on Naruto, but Kuzan's reach was far greater than his. Damn I can't fight back. Right now it is a waiting game just wait for an opening. Not many other options, but his attacks are getting heavier. You can take it. You've been through far worse. Naruto was brought back to the fight as he noticed he was in the shade of a tree. Naruto was in a bad position as he felt each of his own steps was painting him into a corner. The Inazuka clan were not tacticians and he could see the only the thought in the man's head was crushing Naruto. The crowd was a bit rowdy with those who were betting. Some chanting for Kuma to turn it around and others saying Kuzan you worthless bastard knock the kid out. It didn't take long for Naruto's back to touch bark. An unsettling smirk graced the man's face, he jumped back and shouted, tunneling fang. Up the tree Naruto. Without a second thought he ran up the tree to Sum's surprise. Since when did he learn that? She thought as Kuzan slammed into a tree tarring through the trunk. As the tree toppled Naruto jumped and was over the man's head. He could feel the twinge in his feet as he planned to land square on Kuzan's back, Naruto started channeling chakra to his legs and started falling faster to his own surprise. Kuzan got a whiff of the boy overhead and tried to dodge left, but his right leg didn't get out of the way fast enough as Naruto landed hard on his calf. Everyone cringed as they heard a loud sickening crack and scream of pain. Naruto. Do you know what you just did? Naruto couldn't answer as this was the first time something like this happened for him. You crippled the bastard and I am happy about that, but you should not try new things in the midst of battle. What were you thinking? I I just W wanted to knock him out so I channeled some chakra to make sure I did. When you focus your chakra to scale a surface it is like anyone else's, but when you focus it into an object or limbs it makes them become denser along with becoming heavier. Why didn't you? Tell me this. I wasn't expecting you to do something you haven't really been taught in a fight. Sume called the match naming Kuma the winner as Kuzan continued to scream in pain with his Sochi trying to calm his Oto. Some money exchanged hands as the crowd dispersed not caring that a man was crippled. Sume dragged off Naruto as she told a man to take Kuzan to the hospital. Back at Sume's home. Okay spill it kid when did you learn tree climbing? She wanted to know and was interested to find out how a child learned a technique that fresh Genin didn't know. Not too long ago. That answer just raised more questions. Who taught you, was it Aruka san No, it was someone who wants me to be a great shinobi. That answer didn't narrow anyone down because even if he didn't know it there were many who would want that. The only thing it gave away was the fact he was a fast learner. Sume could see he wasn't going to give a name and his eyes said even with if you threaten me. Fine I won't push any further, but since you got tree climbing down which requires a degree of chakra control. Sume grabbed the scroll and tossed it to Naruto. See if you can open that. Channeling his chakra to the seal it began to dissolve. Sume eyes widened when he opened it. Alright Kuma-kun these are a few jutsus that Kakashi, Hokage-sama, and Y and Single Me want you to learn. With your chakra reserves should come in real handy. When you have learned the jutsu put a drop of blood in the box next to it and they will disappear. Shadow clone just su. Kakashi mass shadow clone jutsu. Me go big or go home. Shadow clone bomb jutsu. Me again chameleon jutsu. Hokage-sama. But if you peek on any woman in the village I'll castrate you. Body Flicker Jutsu. Kakashi below or the Jutsus and their descriptions just wanted you to know who to thank. Also, by opening the scroll it has alerted a pretty damn good Kenjutsu specialist codenamed Neiko. She'll start teaching you the day after you open this thing or when she has time. Side note she doesn't know that Kuma is Naruto and this sentence will disappear after 10 minutes of being open. 
Once all jutsu are learned the scroll will destroy itself. See ya when we get back Anko baby, Anko, you are a crazy bitch. Sume thought looking after reading the letter over Naruto's should. She then noticed that Naruto was heading to the door. Where are you heading Gaki? He stopped at the door and turned with the scroll in hand. I am going to train there is still plenty of time left in the day. With that he left leaving Sume admiring his dedication to hard work and hoped that it would rub off on Kiba. Hope he returns in time for diner don't want to be wasting good food. Hana. Kiba I want you two training till diner time got me? Ka san. Both pleaded, don't ka san me. I don't want my kids being slackers. Later that night Naruto came back tired, dirty, and bruised. The only ones up to greet him were Hana and Sume while Kiba went to bed straight after diner. You're late getting home Kuma-kun. Hana stated not catching her ending. You're late Gaki eat up, clean up, and go to bed you have school with my Sochi in the morning. What's in the sack? Noticing that he was carrying, something over his shoulder. These are the clothes she Nissan got me. I can't just wear Kiba-san's clothes. Okay then I will be going to bed night. Sume waved as she headed upstairs. Don't stay up late you two. She disappeared upstairs as a pillow hit the wall leaving Hannah blushing in the living room. I can put the bag in Kiba's room for you, if you want. Thank you Hannah Chan let me just take out my pajamas and you can take it. He took out a lavender pajama suit and a goofy hat, and then handed the bag to Hannah. Well I'll head to bed, but I'll drop it off night Kuma Kun. She headed upstairs lugging the sack. Night Hannah Chan. As she disappeared to the upper level, so I get to go to school. Yup Cubby Kun, but there are two things I want you to promise me. What are they? One keep your bloodlines hidden they could raise too many questions and two don't be too good or too bad just fly under the radar okay. Yes Q Chan I promise to be unremarkable at school. Also, have they made it to the library? He felt the fox smirk. Yeah Sochi. Good. Naruto headed to the kitchen with a smile. Outside the shinobi library three figures were perched on the roof. Remember boss want affinity training books, elemental jutsus, some more fuenjutsu books, kenjutsu books, and possibly a hobby. The two anbu on guard leave 48 second window every 20 minutes. The two on guard are hawk and falcon both sensor nin so we'll have to stay in that state when we're in there. I really hate how it feels, but is extremely useful so when you're in there find a book on human anatomy by Tsunade. Why her is she special or something? She is a sanin of your village, considered the strongest shinobi, and world best medical ninja. Also, learning about the human body could help with perfecting that. Fair enough Q Chan. They closed their eyes. Remember the feeling of death. Their eyes were now glassy, skins were cold, the sound of their breathing had stopped, and their hearts stopped pumping as they vanished. The fox shuddered as the feeling reached her. This technique utilizes your bloodlines in order to mimic a dead body. How can you stand this? Necessity called for boss to play dead in order to live, but it does feel slightly different. Probably because now your bones are lighter, seriously you need to train can't go on with just raw talent alone. We'll keep that in mind. The three figures entered through the window. Inside the library, okay I'll head to Fuenjutsu. You go find Kenjutsu, and you find the elemental affinity. As one figure whispered to the others as they nodded in agreement. Once we locate those then I will find the books on human anatomy. You check for a hobby, and you grab some elemental jutsus just wind, fire, water, and lightning. Alright let's go. It took 18 minutes for them to locate the first set of books and began looking for the second set didn't take much longer for two of them, but the one searching for a hobby was taking some time. He was wandering through different aisle searching. Knowing it had to be something that could transfer over to field, but able to be just for fun. Without realizing he wandered into a wing for the village's allies the Suna section. He remembered the day a puppeteer came to the village when he was six watching from the alley because the parents didn't allow him near their kids as the woman entertained the children. He was captivated as the woman made the toys dance. It was probably the only decent memory of that year. The figure grabbed the books of basic puppet constructions as he made his way back to the other two. You get what you wanted. Yes. Okay. Boss is waiting for these let's move out. The three waited for the 48 second gap. Soom's house Naruto now dressed in his pajamas reading the chakra control book he skipped over. Going over multiple exercises other than tree climbing it was like a starter book for doing and creating jutsus. Naruto the clones are back. He closed the book and walked to the back door. 
Opening at the light showed the three figures were exact clones holding a bag. It seems you guys had fun. Naruto smiled at them. We did boss here are the books you wanted. They tossed the bag of books to their creator with a smile. Thanks guys. With that he dispelled his clones and he was flooded with their memories. Oh I already love this jutsu. You got your books now get some rest cubby kun. You have your first day of school. He smirked as he headed to the stairs. This is going to be fun. You can't prank anyone it could give away who you are. Naruto pouted at that fact. Okay less fun. You could think of this as a giant prank on those who are trying to hold you back. Okay, that's even more fun. Next morning waking up would have been nice for Naruto. The sun was up, birds were chirping, and he was laying on a very comfortable futon. What killed it was Kiba fell off his bed and decided to cuddle. Ah you two are so adorable. Naruto scrambled out from under Kiba's arm, waking Akamaru who found a spot in between the two. Turning his head to the door he saw Sume with a camera. I see you found out Kiba is a cuddlier. Naruto had a panicked look on his face followed by a pleading one. Please tell me you didn't. Consider it insurance if you don't listen. Now get ready. Wake up. Kiba shot awake startled by his mother. Get up and get dress. She left while looking at the picture laughing. In the dining room Kiba was the first to go downstairs with the big grey jacket with the black fur on the hood and sleeves over what he slept in followed by Akamaru. Naruto came down a bit after in black cargo pants, sandals, and undershirt with the jacket Anko bought unzipped to show the shirt. Do you guys have everything you need? Sume asked from the kitchen. Yes Ka San. Yes Sume Chan. He didn't know what he needed being the first time getting a formal or legal education. Good breakfast will be ready in a minute. The two boys sat down as Akamaru jumped up on the table. Ka San where is Nichan? Kiba asked noticing his sister wasn't at the table. She is out with her team chasing a cat and won't be back until the end of the day. Why is that Sume Chan? They could hear her laugh from the kitchen. You'll find out if that cat lives that long. Kuromaru walked out gave a nod to Kiba who was still half asleep, approached Naruto and gave him a couple of sniffs. After two sniffs Kuromaru barked, Akamaru pounced at Naruto and started squirming through his clothes. Naruto was laughing as the puppy made his way to the top of his head, once out the pup barked. Kuromaru sniffed again and gave a nod. What was that about? Thought it confused Naruto as the white pup jumped off. Just guessing, but I think you didn't smell right. Ha. Ha, Sume walked in with two plates of food. Kiba once you're finished head out I need to talk to Kuma. The Inazuka boy just mumbled in agreement as he started eating. Naruto got a little bit nervous, but started eating. Kiba left with Akamaru in his coat. Sume turned to Naruto and handed him Abarame style sunglasses. What are these for? I hate to admit it, but Inazukas are not the brightest. Naruto placed them on. If people ask you're a blood packed child in the clan it is with is only known by the clan head and Hokage. Also, back to the bright statement no playing shogi with the Nara boy. Naruto was shocked and didn't make an effort to hide it. How did you know? She sighed. You are elusive I have to give you that, but you're not good enough to elude everyone 24-7 no one is. Flashback Shikamaru was the first friend Naruto made he was 5 when they first met. Naruto tried entering the civilian library trying to find something to pass the time, he didn't know how to read, but being not allowed to do anything didn't leave him much options. Like every other place they were quick to toss him out once he set foot inside. Once it was night he snuck in and stole a few books from random sections based on the interesting looking covers. The next day he was looking through them in one of the unused training fields realizing that only two had pictures in them, he threw one behind him. Ouch, who threw that? A voice came from the direction he tossed it. A boy around the same age with a hairstyle that could only be described as a black pineapple got up. Hey why did you throw this? The boy now holding the book in hand. Naruto knew he had to try and talk his way out, I was finished with it. The boy had a disbelieving look on his face, what's it about? Naruto felt he was caught. Things and stuff if you want to know, why don't you read it? I have, it is a poetic book of philosophy comparing humans to clouds. Naruto knew he couldn't talk his way out anymore. Troublesome, you can't read can you? Naruto just nodded. Well this isn't a book you should start with. The boy walked over to look at the pile he had. You should start with this one. What is that one about? It's a how to book on reading. 
A sweat drop formed as he didn't realize that he took a book that could help him. Will you help me? Naruto's eyes pleaded the boy sighed troublesome and sat down, my name is Narashikamaru by the way. Naruto smiled. Mine is, Uzumaki Naruto and thank you. Over the next few weeks Shikamaru taught Naruto to read far beyond his age so Naruto could read the book he hit him with. After a month he introduced Naruto to Shogi which they played one game every weekend in the field. Naruto made Shikamaru promise not to tell anyone about their meetings, not even his best friend Choji. Flashback end, okay Inazuka-sama. Sumei noticed how she went from Sumei-chan back to Inazuka-sama like she took a step back from making him open up and she knew the following wouldn't help. You also can't hang out with Aruka or Tuchi in Ayame they could expose who you really are. When she finished before Naruto could respond he was enveloped in a hug. I know this is difficult, but it is for your own good Naruto-kun, so please be patient and it will all work out. She pulled back a bit removing his new glasses to reveal watery eyes. She stares into them with a comforting look. What have they been told? Sumei smiled a mother's smile. They've been told by the Hokage that for your safety you are no longer in the village and being trained by Jiraiya Sanin. He has the authority to in field promote so Naruto has genin status and is outside the jurisdiction of all, but the Hokage. Naruto will be brought back for the Chunin exams under disguise, but Kuma is working towards genin. Okay Soon chan I will now head to the academy now. Placing the sunglasses back on, he hugged her back and left. He knew she was hiding something, but knew it wasn't bad and didn't push it. At the academy half an hour later, Naruto entered the halls heading towards Aruka's class where the future's genin were taught. Aruka would tell Naruto to meet him there sometimes so they could head to Ichiraku Ramen. He saw Aruka standing in front of the classroom door as he turned to greet. You must be Inazuka Kuma. You're slightly late but I'll chalk it up to being your first day. Naruto didn't mind the person who he thought of as his big brother couldn't recognize him. Even without the brown hair and sunglasses, Naruto was no longer the golden blonde with dark blue eyes and even his whisker birthmarks seemed more like tattoos. Yes I am sensei, Naruto had no problem showing respect to people he cared for. You're very polite, well, let's introduce you to the class. He opens the door to a loud classroom. Aruka sighs, walks to the podium in front of the class, and does a hand sign. Sit down and be quiet, yelled Aruka's giant head at the students who did just what they were told. To Naruto it was distorted and blurry, but it still caught his attention. I will now introduce a new student. Come on in and introduce yourself. Naruto entered the class some faces he recognized immediately Sakura, Choji, Hanada, and Shikamaru who was staring out the window. My name is Inazuka Kuma. Naruto bowed. Thank you. Now take a seat next to, Aruka scanned the room for an open seat. You sit next to Hanada. Hanada raise your hand. I remember her. Flashback Naruto was seven when he met Hanada. Naruto was training in the forest in order to blow off steam. The images of the mob members faces bloody and lifeless flooded his mind. Naruto wished for his hand to inflict the pain he felt back on them tenfold, but knew it would give them more of an excuse to harm him. An hour into it he overheard laughter which he knew all too well as the laughter of tormentors. Naruto took off running towards the sound against his better judgment. He came across two boys picking on a girl saying things like I freak and pushing her. To Naruto her eyes were beautiful. Naruto knew of the Hyuga clan and the side branch that were fairly kind to him. Naruto knew if he fought and beat those kids he would get beaten by their parents. If he fought and lost those kids would be treated like fucking heroes while he would get off with pretty much a scratch compared to a mob beating either way he saves the Hyuga girl. He could tell she was main branch because she didn't hide her forehead like the side branch did. Hey. The boys looked towards Naruto. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Naruto tackled the larger of the two. He wrestled with the two until he just let them beat on him. They left talking about how proud their parents would be. Naruto sat up just barely bruised as he saw the girl looking at him. He didn't know that this was the first time someone defended her without being obligated. T thank why you. No problem. Did you tt think my eyes, are w weird? Naruto was young, but he could tell her confidence was nothing like the main branch. I think your eyes are, beautiful. Naruto rubbed the back of his head and looked away with a blush so he didn't notice how red her entire face got. Before she could say anything in return an elderly Hyuga showed up. Lady Hanada, do not associate with that boy. 
Naruto didn't have to look to see if his forehead was covered or not to tell he was main branch. She tried to protest the mistreatment of him, but was dragged off. The next time he saw her was when she dropped off a plate of food in front of his door and from that day forward she hasn't seemed able to talk to him face to face. Flashback end he sat down next to her and saw a look of disappointment. I wanted Naruto-kun to sit next to me. She has been saving that seat hoping that when Naruto wanted to become a shinobi he would sit next to her so she could work up the courage to talk to him. That day was the day she wanted to be his friend, but when she heard about his life from the side branch, she wanted to be his comfort. She admired how even though his life was hard, he moves forward, and his blue eyes. A blush appeared on her face. Sometime in the afternoon class was over. Aruka went over the history of the village and bare basics. Naruto got slightly bored and pulled out a book during village history, but put it down when Aruka started escape techniques. Students were filing out leaving Naruto and a few others left in class. Shikamaru who was asleep for the second half of the class and Shoji, Sakura and some platinum blonde girl, and Kiba who was talking to two other boys. Naruto was getting up to leave as Kiba came over. Hey Kuma, want to play ninja? Naruto saw that they were the two boys who bullied Hanada and didn't want anything to do with them. I have things to do Kiba, but I will see you at home, see you later. Council Chamber, Hokage-sama, why have you called this meeting? An old man with short spiky gray hair asked as all who surrounded wanted to know. Hiruzen took the pipe out of as he began to speak. This meeting is concerning Uzumaki Naruto. The civilian council had an evil smirk think they will finally get rid of the demon. While the shinobi council side was hoping he would protect Naruto better than he has. As of yesterday Naruto is no longer in the village. The civilian side was practically cheering at the news all except three members. Where is Naruto if you don't mind me asking, Hokage-sama? Another old man with short black hair asked. Again the civilians had an evil smirk. He is outside the village with his godfather being trained for the Chunin exams five years from now. The civilian council was in an uproar. A pink-haired woman rose and began to yell. This is unacceptable the civilian council demand that you put a stop to it. Her voice screeched through the chamber and enraged the shinobi. You dare make demands of the Hokage. A platinum blonde man confronted the pink-haired woman. Our children may be friends, but that doesn't mean I won't put you in your place for your disrespect. Hiruzen raised his hand and silenced both sides. Naruto is outside your power and barely within mine for his godfather is the most elusive person I know. A man with a black pineapple hairstyle decided to speak. You don't mean who I think you mean? Hiruzen smiled at how fast he caught on. Yes Naruto's godfather is Jiraiya Sanin. The room was shocked. Naruto family lineage was only known to a few, but his legal guardians were only known by Hiruzen and Kakashi. Why weren't we informed of Naruto's connection to one of the Sanin let alone the one in charge of our spy network? For Naruto's safety many things that are his will remain only known to me, Homura-san. That will be all the council is dismissed. Homura-san, Kaharu-chan, and Danzo-san please stay. Some were about to protest, but were cut off by the sudden killing intent and left. Once all were gone Hiruzen let out a sigh. Itachi-san you can come out. From the shadows the Uchiha emerged. Now let us discuss the matter at hand. Naruto at the training grounds Naruto did return to the Inazuka compound only to find that Sume was gone and a note was left for him. Hey Kuma Neko chan wants to see you go to training ground number 32 I went to a council meeting. See ya later short sweat and to the point Naruto arrived a few minutes later to see a purple haired woman in full anbu gear with a cat mask covering her face. I see you got the message. So why does an Inazuka want Kenjutsu training? It took a bit of restraint to not just go and hug one of the Anbu who had helped him in the past. I want to be a great shinobi and I assume Anko-chan asked you to help me. Anko-chan is a good friend and I do owe her. So let's test your skills and see what I have to work with. She drew her blade and Naruto set himself in his stance as Nako disappeared from his sight. Three hours later back at the chamber, we see no other way. I wish we could have ended this peacefully. Serutobi said as Itachi looked saddened by the decision. I will do it, but I want Sasuke to be spared that is one of my requests. The other I would like to talk to Hokage-sama alone. You will speak to all of us, no Danzo he is making the sacrifice he has the right to make such request. So you three will leave. Not having the power to argue against the Hokage the three left leaving him alone with Itachi. Few minutes passed before they spoke. 
So what are your requests? 1. Keep an eye on Danzo when I killed Shisui he asked for proof of death his eye. This news did not sit well with Serutobi. 2. Destroy the eyes and 3. Itachi reached into his pouch and pulled out a scroll. When you see Naruto please give this to him. I had a feeling that things would turn out like this and I wanted Naruto to be Sasuke's brother to make sure he had someone to care for, but also as an apology for my clan and how they treated him this scroll will help with training please tell Jiraiya to give it to him when he earns Genin status. I will. He said as he took the scroll in hand. Thank you Hokage-sama. Itachi, shunshined away in a swirl of raven feathers. Back at the training grounds Naruto was laying on his back covered in cuts, some self-inflicted due to trying to counter the blade. Kid has stamina, decent taijutsu skills not in Azuka fighting style, no real experience, high pain tolerance, and no fear. He has great potential. Why didn't you use the shadow clone jutsu? You told me not to try anything new in a fight Q-chan. This was a spar not a fight. You are pretty good for your age. Hell you're above most, but still need to sharpen your skills. How far have you gotten with that scroll? I. Pant. Learned the Shadow Clone Jutsu along with Mass Shadow Clone Jutsu, Shadow Clone Bomb, and I'm having trouble with Chameleon Jutsu and Shunshin or Body Flicker Jutsu. You know the Shadow Clone Jutsu? Why didn't you use it? I was told not to try new things in a fight. How long did it take you to learn it? Nako knew that Kuma opened the scroll yesterday in the afternoon because that is when she got the signal. It took me an hour to learn the first three and I spent the rest of the time trying to learn the other two. Naruto was now sitting up feeling like he caught his breath. Is this kid a prodigy or something? He learned the three harder ones in an hour, but the ones that should be easier he is having trouble with. Guess I'll have to start the training there along with the basics of Kenjutsu. Maybe give you some tips on fighting barehanded against a blade. Thank you Nako chan When we're training call me Nako sensei Hi Nako sensei He bowed to his new sensei. One week later at the academy. The past seven days benefited Naruto greatly. With Neko's help he mastered Shunshin and Chameleon Jutsu. Learning how to fight against blades barehanded complemented his countering style. Neko wants him to work his way up to a katana starting with Tanfas to get used to having a longer reach and dual wielding. The weekend passed and Naruto missed Shogi with Shikamaru for the first time and wondered if he even cared. Naruto was the first to show up for class minus his jacket which got tattered from training which brought up the matter of getting the Inazuka symbol tattooed on his cheek. Naruto told Sume he would get the tattoos, but on his chest since he found out his whisker marks were sensitive it was planned for after school today. Half an hour passed and everyone filed in minus the class Uchiha who was mourning for his clan that was massacred by his brother Itachi which Naruto couldn't believe it. Itachi always talked about how he cared for his family especially his little brother in the village why would he betray both. Class was easy compared to the training and secret chakra control training he had the clones do. The fox told Naruto that he has more chakra than most, which makes D and C rank jutsus harder to master. Class was over and the students filed out again. Shikamaru who again was asleep for half the class got up and approached Aruka. Aruka sensei have you seen Naruto or know where he is? I haven't seen him. Iruka sighed, he is no longer in the village he is with his godfather and won't be back for five years. Shikamaru muttered troublesome and Naruto noticed two faces that looked saddened by the news. Hanada who he did considered a friend and Sakura which surprised him, considering that she dropped their friendship. Flashback Naruto age 6 was hanging around the academy hoping to make a friend he noticed a pink haired girl being tormented by two other girls calling her names regarding her forehead. He chased them off with a beetle sending the girls running. Naruto let the bug fly away as he spoke to the girl. Are you okay? Yes I am thank you, you're welcome. Why are you playing alone? The girl's eyes started to water. They keep picking on me for my forehead. Naruto knew how loneliness feels and wanted to cheer her up. They are just jealous because it is a sign of how smart you. She looked at Naruto with a slight blush. Also, maybe they are jealous because, you are the cutest girl here. The blush became full blown, but Naruto didn't notice because he turned his head to hide his blush for saying that. W would you like to play? Naruto turned to her with the biggest sincere smile that made her happy seeing it. I would like that. They played the rest of the day until nightfall. She had never been happier than that day and didn't keep track of the time. It's getting late I should head home, my name is Haruno Sakura I forgot to introduce myself. 
Mine is Uzumaki Naruto and it is getting late. He turned to see the lamp's turn on which gave her a chance to give him a kiss on the cheek causing them both to blush. I had a fun time by Naruto-kun. See you tomorrow. She ran home waving goodbye to her new friend. They played together for a week and he became arguable her best friend until one day he met her at the academy. Still playing alone he walked towards him, hi Sakura-chan. She got up hair hiding her eyes walked to him and smacked him through the motion her hair moved to show her eyes begging forgiveness. Don't come near me again. She ran off leaving a hurt Naruto standing in the field. He spent weeks trying to salvage it, but knew it was just hurting the both of them. Flashback end the platinum blonde Naruto now knew as Ino saw her look and tried to comfort her. Ino knew about how they knew each other and why they were no longer friends. Naruto had to leave for his tattoo appointment. The tattoo parlor with Sume Naruto was prepared for this, but wanted to add some design. He ran the idea past Sume and she agreed to his idea. Naruto wanted white fangs with blood red on the tips and a thin outlining in red. It took 30 minutes for it to be done as the fangs look like real top row fangs that have tasted blood. You won't be wearing a shirt for a while Kuma to show your ink. Though I believe Hana is not going to complain. Naruto was more defined and muscular for his age. You're going to wear bandages around your stomach especially around the academy okay. The Hokage informed the council of how the seal worked and told them that it becomes visible when Naruto channels chakra. It was considered the biggest mistake he could ever do informing the civilian council that the boy was a jinkariki. Hi Sume Chan. Okay. I got you an Inazuka style jacket. She pulled out a black jacket with an orange streamline from the neck to the wrist, with white fur around the sleeves and hood. Sume grabbed the shirt he came in with and placed it in the bag the jacket came in. Naruto wore the jacket open. No training with Neko Chan today. Sume's home later in the afternoon Kuromaru greeted his partner and gave Naruto a look over. How is Akimimaru? Have the puppies come yet? Hana appeared in the doorway. Kuromaru's maid is fine and is due later tonight. Hana had proven to be an excellent veterinarian by how she takes care of her three the three Haimaru brothers. Good as long as she is healthy. Hana then noticed the shirtless and freshly tattooed Kuma and blushed. Her mother noticed. Get used to him being shirtless cause since his tat is what shows he is in Azuka. Hannah did a quick turn to hide a victorious smile and a turn back to face them giving an indifferent nod. She went back to attend to the expecting mother, along with Kuromaru. Sume turned to Naruto. Once that tattoo quits being sore I will teach you the four legs technique and that will be the only clan jutsu I will teach you. Why is that? Well you are not really in Azuka, but to keep the appearance you have to know one clan related jutsu. Kiba entered dirty with Akamaru on his head both happy that they spent some time playing. Ka-san what's for dinner? You and Akamaru better take a bath before taking about food. Hi, Kiba ran upstairs to the bathroom. Might as well start cooking. Later that night they ate together. Hana finished first to continue tending to Akimimaru, followed by Sume to check on how she was doing. Naruto and Kiba decided to go to bed. Naruto threatened to reveal he cuddles if he didn't get the higher bed so Kiba doesn't roll off and spoon him. Kuromaru mate had three puppies that would be trained and given to some Inazukas deemed worthy of a ninja dog. Once his partner and Hana went to bed assured they were okay. Kuromaru picked up the pup he felt strong potential from and snuck into the boy's room. He saw Naruto sleeping on his back. Placing the pup on his chest Kuromaru saw Naruto's face scrunch a bit since he chest was still sore. Kuromaru gave the pup a lick and left the room, the next morning. Kiba woke up early for the first time. Cool Kuma you got one of the pups. At this point Sume walked in to bug the two, but was caught off guard. Hey Ka-san you gave him a newborn? No, I didn't, but I think I know who did. Naruto was confused by the conversation. Uh, shouldn't puppies be with their Ka-san for the feeding or whatever? Naruto was still on his back, not wanting to move the puppy. Ninja dogs are bred for just in case their Ka San dies, they can take nourishment from outside chakra until they can eat, and you're stuck with that pup. Why is that? She sighed and began explaining. After birth, it takes three hours to bond to its parent's signature. He was only next to Kimimaru for half an hour, and I am guessing that Kuromaru placed him on you after I went to bed. Kuromaru walked in on cue and nodded. She leaned and whispered into the wolf's ear. I'm only going to teach him the four legs technique nothing more he will have to train your son himself. Again the wolf nodded he could feel his son was in good hands. You got to name him Kuma-kun. 
Naruto looked at the black wolf cub with gray fur up to his knees and a gray patch on his head. I will name him Kagemaru. Cuz if you are going to hang out with me you need to be elusive like a shadow. Fitting name and don't worry by the end of this month you won't have to carry him everywhere because he will be able to follow you, but only light training until then. So let's start teaching you the four legs technique. Sochi. Tell her about the iron bloodline it will impact the jutsu, but keep the others hidden. YQ Chan. Because that technique requires infusing your body with chakra to unleash more animalistic behavior so it will be a difficult jutsu for you to learn. As you should remember when you focused into limbs or objects they become denser and heavier. Sume Ch Sensei that technique might be difficult with my bloodline. Hannah walked in just in time to overhear what Naruto said. They were all surprised to hear that. That's cool Kuma. What's your bloodline? Kiba was excited to hear that an Inazuka had a bloodline. When I infused a body part or object with my chakra it becomes denser and heavier. Theoretically, it can make your skin like Earth-style armor minus the weakness to lightning. That will cause some problems, but the answer may lie in chakra control and we should train your bloodline while informing the Hokage of your bloodline. End of the month The rest of the month flew by with the constant training which was far lighter thanks to his new child being dependent on him feeding the cub chakra. Naruto started weight training to counteract the increase in weight when he uses his bloodline. It took more chakra control to find the right amount to perform the jutsu to a point. Naruto also found out that while it is in affect his bones reacted to complement the technique. Learning it ate up most of his time. The Hokage was informed of Naruto's bloodline and promised to keep it from the council until he was a genin. He would inform Anko and Kakashi when they got back. Naruto noticed changes in the people around him. Hinata seemed determined to get stronger catching her sometimes chanting something about being acknowledged but Naruto could see her confidence didn't improve along with her skills. Sakura became a very book smart fangirl along with her friend Ino for the Prince of Emos. Naruto tried to get Sasuke to open up, but was told to stay out of his way. Naruto kept a C grade level keeping the promise not to stand out. He noticed Shikamaru didn't give a damn about grades and slept. Training grounds Naruto looked forward to the heavy training he expected by Kakashi, Anko, and Neko. His Kenjutsu training was put on halt, but his skills with his tanfas were still developing. Kagemaru was happily riding in his hood. He would occasionally give Naruto a lick and whimper to be petted which made him smile. He saw Neko and Anko talking with whomever Kakashi was nowhere in sight. Kuma-kun, Neko-chan says you burned through the scroll, learned a bit taijutsu, and have some skill with tanfas. Naruto just nodded. Also, you have a pup from Sume-chan's partner learned a clan jutsu, and have a bloodline. He has a bloodline? Neko didn't hide her surprise. Yeah he does. A man with a mask, gravity defying white hair, and a forehead protector, covering his eyes spoke while holding an orange book that seemed to anger the two Kanoichis. Inu-san, Naruto thought to himself, it is only known to those training him and will become known to the public once he becomes genin. Kakashi closed his book, Hello Kuma, we will be your senseis until you are genin and handed over to a janin, but we have four years before then so let us start training. His visible eye made an upside down you kind of saying welcome to hell. Twelve year old Naruto, Nissan wake up. Naruto awoke to see Kiba with Akamaru staring at him from across the room and Kagemaru with Hakaramaru curled up together sleeping next to him. Hakaramaru was a white anba, a weird creature that resembled a bear cub mixed with a gorilla. Bare back legs, gorilla arms with clawed hands. Naruto came across him two years ago and been raising him ever since. Kiba. You're older than me by a few months. Wake up guys. Naruto nudged his two partners. Kagemaru now the size of Akamaru Yan. Tu-san, can we have five more minutes? Hakaramaru growled. Don't call Ka-san, Tu-san. Kagemaru growled back. Don't call Tu-san, Ka-san. Kiba was laughing at the usual argument between the two as Naruto slapped his face. How about you two just call me Nissan? In unison they replied. Never to San, Ka San it would be disrespectful. If you don't mind being called Nissan then I will continue. Kiba continued laughing. You're older than me damn it. Naruto shouted as he got up and dressed in grey cargo pants, black sandals, wrapping bandages around his stomach putting a glove over his left hand which had a storage seal for his weapons in his palm, and finally placing his sunglasses on. 
Naruto had weight and resistant seals on his now well-defined biceps, he was now as tall as Shino due to having a more diverse diet. Just below his fang tattoo had a special storage seal. Come on time for breakfast. Hakaramaru climbed onto his back as Kagemaru jumped onto Naruto's head. Kitchen Sume was sitting at the table and Hana was cooking. Naruto and Kiba entered. Hey Sume chan, Ka san, Hana chan, Ni chan. Hana turned to her brother, gave a nod, then turned to Naruto. Thank you, Kami. Naruto has been shirtless for four years, which didn't help against Hana's growing crush on the former blonde, but it did help her learn to hide her blushes from her ever teasing mother. Food is almost ready, you too. Thank you, Hana chan. Hana put some finishing touches and laid the plates in front of Kiba and Sume as Naruto had to wait until Hakaramaru to get off before he sat down. Kagemaru stuck out his. I don't have to get off for two san to eat. The argument began again about what to call their parent ending when Naruto threatened to not let either of them on him for a week if they didn't cut it out. You're so cute with your kid's cubby kun. Arriving at the academy. Hey Kuma kun. Over the years with the training he got from two janin and an anbu he gained a small fan club compared to the brooding prince due to his looks. When he and Sasuke were at a hot spring together a lot of girls took the chance to try and get pictures of them in in the buff. Kuma Nisa on. That was the only warning as a small boy glopped onto Naruto's chest. Naruto stood his ground. Carrying a 20 pound Anba on his back, a 10 pound wolf cub on his head, not to mention weight and resistant seals on his arms, and now a 55 pound child on his chest does a lot for building muscle. Play ninja with me. He looked up to Naruto with the puppy eyes jutsu. Hey Yoda kun, your class has recess. Naruto asked while rubbing Yoda's head. Yoda was a small and skinny boy with tan skin and a constant blush. He had spiky waist length, brown hair with short bangs hanging over his eyes and chin length strands framing both sides of his face. He had green eyes with no pupils. He also had a wide smile with pronounced canines. He wore a dull green robe with a dull brown cloak, wooden getta, and bandages on his head and wrists, with a purple headband. Yes, so play with me. Sorry I have class starting in a minute. Yoda was about to start crying, but stopped when he saw Naruto remove his sunglasses giving him a stern and caring look. You know I love you like a little brother, but I won't give in just because you're crying. Now, I will play with you after school and you'll spend the night at the compound with us. He gestured to Kiba and himself. Yoda smiled and buried his head in Naruto's chest. That is awesome. I get to spend the night really? Naruto smiled. I promise and I don't break my promises. You know this. With that he jumped off and ran back with a giant smile plastered on his face. And that is one of the reasons I call you Nissan. Kiba stated and laughed at his annoyed face. In the classroom, all right everyone today is day you all have prepared for. The rookie of the year will be named in top Kanoichi. The majority of girls rooted for their brooding hero no more than his top two, Sakura and Ino. Naruto just looked at Sasuke and knew he was getting worse. The civilian council was kissing his ass and trying to force the clans to do the same. Last he heard Hiyashi was fighting his elder clan members against trying to arrange a marriage between his daughters and the last Uchiha. We will begin the exam after lunch, remember the three jutsu you have to know are Henge, Kawerimi, and Bunshin. With that said some students decided to practice. Ask if you can do shadow clone instead. I already thought of that, but how do I explain how I learned it without raising flags? You were taught by Jonin and Anbu. Again already thought of it by law Jonin can't teach civilian status children even if they belong to a clan. If I tell they get in trouble and look into my identity Gigi bent the rules to help me so I have to figure this out on my own. I hate how you've cut me out of your thought processes, he felt her pout. I am a growing boy with some interesting thoughts and also trying to be a shinobi. So I need to know how to keep my thoughts to myself Q chan Um kuma kun. Naruto turned to the Hyuga girl. Would you mind helping me? Hanada was more open to Kuma than Naruto didn't blush or stutter uncontrollably and faint. It became clear that she saw Kuma as a friend, but what did she see Naruto as was the thought going through his head. I would be honored Hanada-chan. Outside field Naruto's partners decided to take a nap as he spared with the Hyuga heiress which gave him great insight to her. No confidence at all when Naruto gave her the chance to end it she didn't take it. He knew she noticed as she awkwardly avoided the finishing move. Hanada was the most skilled and has the most potential of the future Kanoichi at the academy. She was smart, perceptive, 
and taijutsu skills were on par with a mid-level chunin. She even started putting her own spin on gentle fist. I will make you proud Naruto. Since you help me I can try and help you with the bunshin. After 15 failed clones Hanada started to worry about Kuma chances of graduating. It also didn't help that he had a frustrated look. It wasn't frustrating for him what was frustrating was the fact he hadn't thought of a way to explain the shadow clone jutsu. Seems like the Inazuka clan is not that talented or bright. He turns to see the emo prince have a mix of emotions on his face confidence, disappointment, hate, and anger. Naruto could only guess why the lash out at the clan, but they were taking care of him. Why did my clan die and theirs continue? Hakarimaru and Kagemaru were now awake about to bear their fangs, but stopped when they noticed the mischievous smirk on their parents' face. Then let us see who's better Teme. Sasuke frowned being the first time someone insulted him and got into a stance that shouldn't have been taught to him then dashed towards Naruto. Dodging a kick to the head Naruto then just kicked him in the nuts. Screams rang throughout the village from his fangirls. Sasuke rolling on the ground cupping his balls stared daggers at him. You're an asshole. Who kicks another person in the nuts? Naruto just shrugged. Don't go for the high kick, if you can't guard the tidbits. He walked away with his partners, ignoring the many glares. Strangely Ino and Sakura were quiet. Hum he may be useful. A figure watched from behind. Hokage's office Serutobi was behind the desk and mentally cursing the mountain of paper. How the hell did you do these so fast Monado? Speaking out loud as Anko, Sume, Neiko, and Kakashi with his orange book entered. Glad to see you three, Anbu leave us except you Neiko san. On his order the Anbu hidden in the rafters disappeared. Yugo chan you can take off that mask now. She complied with an inquisitive look. If I may ask why were we called Hokage sama? He took a quick puff from his pipe before gazing at the three. He got up and touched the wall activating the privacy seal. Closing his book Kakashi decided to speak. You wish to know how Kuma is doing. You'll be one step closer to your life Naruto. Giving a nod Anko stepped forward. Kuma-kun training was extreme. We had him running all kinds of exercises especially weight since his bloodline causes him to become heavy and slow. Also, he says it can hide his chakra signature. Flashback five days after the training had started Anko took Naruto to a secluded area. Now spill how do you avoid highly trained Anbu. Naruto forgot to think about a way to explain or even figure out how he fakes death. He kind of knew that when his heart stops blood still circulate, but what about breathing without using his lungs, cold skin yet warm inners, and being harder to detect? Listen to me and I will tell you only part of how you do it. A minute of discussing how she should just outright tell him about his bloodlines and how to master them she then said I won't just give you things on silver platters you will need to work for them. It was instinct to try and hide myself from others since you know my life. Some shinobi joined in on my beatings so to hide from them I solidified or insulated my chakra coil by concentrating on the coil itself. My chakra still flows through but not out and also I keep detailed knowledge on Anbu behavior. Flashback end, all in all, he is becoming a real all-around shinobi, but mostly a heavy hitter. Also, he has this way of motivating those around him. Sume chimed in sort of proud of the boy. After a little walk with Kuma a while back Kiba started really applying himself. Flashback two years ago Sume was pacing the house wondering where the boys were. She was contemplating searching for them because her instincts were screaming they needed help. As soon as the door opened her face lost color as Naruto walked in battered, bruised, and covered in blood with torn clothes while Kiba was worse. Bloodied, arm cut, ankle sprained, but had a victorious grin. Akamaru and Kagemaru were both resting in Kiba's hood. Kasan you should have seen how me and Nissan fought this weird creature. She gave a sigh because they were home, but pushed that aside and called the medical nin. The boys were resilient and lucky it wasn't anything worse. Now tell me what happened. It was more of a demand instead of a question. They told her how they fought a creature five times their size she would have thought it a lie until a young Hakarimaru started crying. Kiba you have to keep quiet about Kuma being able to use shadow clones. Kiba promised that day he would be quiet about it, not freeze in the field, and to do more damage. I'll be strong like Nissan. Naruto was too tired to nip the new name in the butt. Flashback end, he can physically overpower almost any John and I know. Once those seals are off he could give Guy a run. Plus downward attacks with his iron chakra bloodline could turn them into deadly crushing blows. If I didn't notice he charged his knee and elbow in that crossblock he could have amputated my leg. 
Kakashi spoke not taking his eye off the book. So he will fit in well with your team Kakashi. He looked at Kakashi with eyes that said I know how much you want to be there for him. Kakashi sighed. No, it shocked the people in the room no more than Serutobi. I do want Kuma on my team, but I might show favoritism, plus I have to train the last Uchiha. The civilian council took it upon them to bribe some of the Chunin to give Sasuke private training. Now since he will achieve Genin status they want Kakashi to train him. So whose team should I put him on? I checked his affinity and found he has the wind chakra and the only other is your son Asuma. He is growing in taijutsu and Gai could teach him far more than any other Janin. I had to use some of Gai's training methods on him. Kuranai can teach him strategy since she focuses on more collaborative or efficient ways of taking down targets. Lastly you could bring in someone special for him. Serutobi knew what he meant when he said special. Yugo was confused, two of those names have set their three genin choses especially Gai his team has been active for the past year. Also, Kuranai wants Hanada, Shino, and Kiba to make a tracking squad. It is not unheard of to have a five-man team. Asuma has the future Inoshika Cho trio set because that is what the Shinobi Council wants. Kuranai may want those three, but most likely replace Kiba with Kuma. Gaia would gladly accept another person to spread the flame of youth to another. Kakashi replied still not looking up from his book. Yugo was not happy that her good friend would get a substitute for an heir if they planned to give Kuma to her. Sume Chan, are you okay with your son not getting training he needs? Sume looked at her, knowing what she was getting at. She knows Kuranai has already planned on how to train Kiba to his full potential. I would like for my son to get the best training he can, but he also needs to know how to train himself when it is not given to him. Break down his strengths and weaknesses on his own. Will he really be able to do that when someone already has plans for him? Also Yu Chan we all had a hand in training Kuma and no offense she would be getting the better deal if she gets Kuma. Anko gave her two cents. I would lean more towards placing him on Gai's team just to turn him into a taijutsu master. Kakashi stated then shuddered at the thought of that genjutsu. Since we all have an idea let's discuss the best one for all parties involved. Hirazen released the privacy seal and sent word for Gai, Kuranai, and his son Asuma. Academy classroom. All right Kuma you need to do a henge. Naruto transformed into an exact copy of Aruka and changed back. Good, now Kawarimi. Naruto did the hand sign and suddenly an Anbu shinobi with a bear mask appeared. Kuma, please do Kawarimi. Mizuki said believing he just hanged. I did sensei. He turned to see Naruto sitting with his feet up on the table. The Anbu shunshined away, wondering how that kid did that to him. Now, the Bunshin. Naruto noticed a quick smirk cross Mizuki's face. Naruto gave a sigh of defeat as he did the Bunshin which was a sickly clone lying on the ground and faded away. Aruka sighed not liking what he had to say. I am sorry Kuma, but you fail. Hey why don't we just pass him Aruka-san? The word of the Hokage is the law they have to be able to do all three jutsus. Sorry Kuma-kun. Naruto walked out with his partners behind. An hour later everyone had their forehead protector as Naruto was sitting with his partners. Two san are you okay with this? Why not just take one ka san? You're stronger than them. No Hikari that is not how you treat others. Naruto started swinging with them in his lap. Hinata walked home being summoned by her father she tried getting Kuma to walk her home, but he said he was waiting for someone. Ten minutes later, Kuma Nisan. Yoda ran to him with a big smile on his face, let's go. Naruto smiled at the boy's excitement. Night he played with Yoda until the lights came on. Covered in dirt and grime from playing ninja he decided to send Yoda to the house with Hakarumaru and Kagemaru telling him to take a bath. Naruto stayed saying he will catch up. You are really good with kids cubby kun. Is that really surprising? My life was hell why wouldn't I keep another's from being the same? I love how kind you are, and I hate this village for what they did to you, a figure walked up to Naruto. He was surprised someone was watching him and was even less surprised it was Mizuki. Hey Kuma kun sorry you didn't pass. Lying son of a b. But you can do a makeup exam. Naruto looked at him with the best hopeful face he could muster, but on the inside was thinking what is his game. Mizuki was trying to control the growing smirk that was building. Yes it is not well known you have to sneak into the Hokage's office. Easy. Take the forbidden scroll and learn one of its jutsus you automatically pass. When you're done hand the scroll to me and I'll return it. What the fuck? 
does he really think I am that fucking stupid too? Thinking back on the grades he got to be an unremarkable student and a believable in Azuka, he could see how Mizuki would think Kuma was that stupid. Then a smile appeared on Naruto's face that made Mizuki give a shit-eating grin. So I can become Genin? Yes just this exam has three parts R member. Sneak in and take the scroll. Avoid the Anbu. Finally bring the scroll to me so I can teach you one of those jutsus. Okay. Naruto nodded in agreement but in unison they thought, dumbass. Outside the Hokage's office it was getting close to midnight Naruto was aware that there were always ten Anbu circling the perimeter of the building at all times, ten more at different points looking on with overlapping fields of vision. I should tell Gigi about the blind spot when I'm done, noticing none or censors he didn't feel the need to fake the feeling of death to the fox's delight. He timed his movements to get to the ventilation shaft. Why have shafts big enough for people to get through I will talk with Gigi once this is over. Inside the office he looks around to see where the scroll was where Mizuki said it was. Naruto found this scroll which is supposed to be forbidden it wasn't well protected. N. Kuma what do you think you are doing? Somewhere in town ten minutes later Anbu appeared in front of a few people. Hokage-sama needs all Chunin and Janin to report to his office now. Somewhere in the surrounding forest Naruto was waiting for Mizuki at their meeting point simply killing time with three clones. Kuma. Naruto knew this voice belonged to Aruka. You were under arrest for stealing the forbidden scroll. Shit, Naruto was not expecting to see Aruka, but he could see he wasn't expecting to see three Narutos. Wow Aruka, I had only enough time to learn one jutsu, but that means I pass right. Naruto gave his most innocent smile. You mean you learned this jutsu from the scroll, wait what do you mean pass? Mizuki sensei said whoever learns a jutsu from the forbidden scroll becomes a genin. Aruka's eyes widened in shock at the news of his friend's betrayal and how he tried to frame a student. They only got wider as he heard something flying through the air. Get down. Naruto dispelled his clones as he hit the ground along with Aruka. A large shuriken embedded itself shallowly in the tree. Mizuki how could you do this? Mizuki appeared with a smirk on his face. To bad Aruka if only I got to him first you wouldn't have to die. Oh and no need to ask questions, cause you're both dead. He grabbed one of the two large shuriken on his back and launched it at Naruto. You first in Azuka Mutt. Naruto was prepared for it and was waiting for it to come closer, but before he moved Uruka tackled him and took the attack to his back. Naruto removed it and started doing a medical jutsu used for flesh wounds. Mizuki had sadistic grin as he shunshined behind Naruto drawing a kanai stabbing him in the back. Naruto's body slumped over Uruka who was unconscious. Have to kill you too Uruka. Mizuki hand was barreling down as the scroll exploded in a puff of smoke. A figure dash striking his liver, kidney, and jaw sending Mizuki skidding across the forest floor. Naruto was standing in his stance with Tonfas in hand. I was hoping you would gloat to stroke your ego, but I guess I'll have to beat why you want this scroll out of you. Mizuki was up and pissed. How the hell are you alive? Special shadow clone dumbass. Mizuki got into a taijutsu stance with the kanai in hand. They dashed towards each other their weapons clashed. Naruto was capitalizing on his poor skills as throughout the fight openings kept popping up. Five minutes of fighting and Mizuki was on his knees. So now are you going to tell me why you're doing this? Fuck you Gaki, you know what I'll show you. Mizuki pulled out a vial and drunk it. His body grew larger with muscles, the clothes on his upper body ripped off, and fur began to sprout on his body. This is the power lord Orochimaru offer his followers. Mizuki lunged forward swiping his now massive fists at Naruto's head. Mizuki's speed dropped and Naruto didn't want to try his strength, he deactivated the seals and danced around the now monstrous Mizuki, striking his legs and joints slowing him further. Mizuki started swinging wildly eyes barely tracking and occasionally catch a glimpse of a tonfa cracking him across the face. You traded speed for strength you can't use and are about to lose. Now in blind rage at how a genin was besting him says who you son of a bitch says me snakes wrapped around his body constricting naruto ran up placing his hand on the snakes channeling chakra making them like heavy chains mizuki fell on his back with a loud thud good show gaki it was fun watching how you operate in the field what's with the body of you anko pointed at the slumped body it is an iron shadow clone draw backs a bitch if they die he dispelled the clone and nearly fell to his knees Strikes don't, pant. Disrupt the chakra and, pant. 
can stay for an hour after death before dispelling on its own. The clone is a good step to what you're working on Cubby, but you may need help. I'll keep an eye out for someone, don't worry Q Chan. Did you plan this you little bastard? Naruto nodded and gave him the finger for the bastard comment. Yep Mizuki Baka I did. Flashback, N. Kuma what do you think you are doing? Sarutobi yelled after activating a privacy seal fearing to expose Naruto. He startled Naruto causing him to bump into a table. Gigi I am here to inform there is a traitor in your mist Mizuki and I need your help to set him up. Naruto proceeded to tell him how Mizuki thinks he tricked Naruto into stealing the scroll. How he sent a clone to tell Anko where he would meet Mizuki, another one to Sume to locate areas he has visited, lastly two to Kakashi and Nako to check if others are helping him. What do you need? Have Anbu use this time check the area for more suspicious people and have only the Janin and Chunin really search for me. Alright then and you're becoming a Genin tonight. Flashback and Mizuki was struggling with his restraints as Anko kept kicking his face repeatedly. He is a weak abomination isn't he? Snake whore. 5. Anbu, Shinobi appeared placing seals on his body. We will take it from here. Hokage-sama would like to see you for your reward. The one with a bear mask stated before they grabbed Aruka and tried to lift Mizuki. Call Guy we need help with carrying Mizuki. Hokage's office, good work Kuma-kun. Because of you we have uncovered a traitor, a hidden lab, and gained a new soldier. Sarutobi handed Naruto his protector which he wrapped around his arm. Now head home and rest you have a long day tomorrow air today actually. Looking at the clock. Thanks Hokage-sama. Naruto felt the eyes on him from the rafters. To the surprise of the Anbu, he shunshined away. Why do I feel I'm forgetting something? Probable not important. Naruto, Kiba's room Naruto entered their room to see Yoda cuddled up next to Hikari and Kagemaru on his bed while Kiba was on his futon with Akamaru sleeping on his chest. Time for bed. He said to himself as he gently pushed Yoda over so he could finally sleep. Mindscape. How does it feel to be a Gen in Naruto? The voice called from behind the bars. Feels like I am one step closer to being the real me. Naruto looked around the sewer like dwellings of his mind. Is there any way to change this setting I mean you can't really enjoy being here? Sadly you can't not until some matters are taken care of, but don't worry as long as you keep visiting I'm happy. A woman with crimson hair and eyes wearing black kimono with silver lining showing off her hourglass figure appeared from behind the bars. Her tails reached out grabbing Naruto and pulled him into a hug. I can spend an eternity here if you're with me Sochi. She had his head burrowed in her chest so she couldn't see his face. He hugged her back and just kept her company throughout the night. Morning Naruto awoke to laughing as he saw Kiba standing and pointing to see Yoda had glopped onto him. You have no right to laugh since you did the same. Can't let me have fun can you Nissan? Naruto was about to comment, but was cut off by the sound of a camera. Another keeper Kuma Kun, now get up a go you two have placement today. You passed Nissan that's so cool we could be on the same team. Kiba grabbed some clothes and left before Naruto could say anything to him. Yoda was now awake rubbing his eyes to notice Kuma next to him. Kuma Nissan. His partners were now awake. 2. Ka San. They looked at one another and started arguing. You're a real popular cubby. The vixen snickered. Ha ha Q Chan, so funny. Academy Naruto, Kiba, and their partners entered the room to see nearly all their classmates wearing the headbands somewhere on their bodies. What are you losers doing here? Naruto knew it was the trophy of the village speaking to them in such a manner. Kajimaru and Akamaru were about to jump off to attack the person who disrespected their owners. Fangirls loyal to Sasuke chimed in with stupid cheers as the ones who liked Kuma simply told them to shut up in the tent to one Sasuke likes men. War nearly broke out in the classroom as Aruka did his patented big head jutsu which is a genjutsu as Naruto found out. It always appeared distorted whenever he sees it. I am proud to say you all passed and that you all must carry out your duties with the utmost professional demeanor. Aruka paused to let it sink and hoped that it would sink in. Meanwhile in the council chambers, why have you called this council meeting Hokage-sama? I called this meeting to tell you our village has another bloodline. He saw many greedy eyes widen at this news. What is this new bloodline and who has it? Haruno spoke with the glint in her eye. Inoichi was livid. You just want to turn your own daughter into a whore for another. Is there no end to your selfishness and greed that you would not take her feelings into account? Haruno glared at Inoichi and was about to yell 
that was cut off by Danzo. Calm yourselves we all wish to know who this person is, and none of us want you to yell bitch, he thought rubbing his temples. His name is Inazuka Kuma and his bloodline is Iron Chakra, it turns whatever he charges with it become dense and heavy, he has been training it to have combat capabilities. So the Inazuka clan has a second bloodline? All turned to Sumei waiting for an answer. Not really seeing as he is a blood packed child, but as far as we know his other clan is destroyed since they haven't been in contact. You've been making secret pacts with other clans? That is high treason, Homura accused. The Hokage was well informed of the pact and labeled it a triple S class secret. They all looked to the Hokage who simply nodded. Hokage sama, I would like to make a request. Serutobi looked to Hiyashi and gestured to continue. I would like Kuma to be on my daughter's team. Hey Inoichi, why the fuck are you not getting on his case? The room grimaced as the banshee yelled. Because unlike you I'm not pimping my daughter out, he has been helping her and would be good for her to be around him. Why do you care? You gave legal guardianship to Kuranai and named her younger sister the heir. That is a clan matter that doesn't concern you civilian. Enough, you all have been informed and that was the purpose of this meeting so all of you are dismissed. I wish the first never came up with the idea for the civilian council. Academy Team 7 is Haruno Sakura, Inazuka Kiba, and Uchiha Sasuke. Your Jonin is Hitaki Kakashi. The only one who cheered was Sakura. Team 8 Hayuga Hanada, Abarame Shino, and Inazuka Kuma. Your Jonin is Yuhi Kuranai. Hanada was happy that her friend and mother figure were going to be her team, but was afraid to show it. Team 9 is still active. Finally, Team 10 is Yamanaka Ino, Narashikamaru, and Akamichi Choji. Your Jonin is Serutobi Asuma. The three were cool with it seeing as their families have been close since before they were born. I am proud of you all and congratulations. Enden. If you have a problem with him being on Team 9 blame the voters. I wanted him in either Guy's team or Yamato's. The fight scene sucked cause Mizuki sucks. Naruto will bang his fiance. Ha 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 revenge. Naruto only understands his partners because they fed off his chakra. Kiba can understand them because of Inazuka bloodline. By now you know two parts of how he fakes death. Here is an omake. Two years ago nine-year-old Naruto a month away from his birthday, wearing his jacket, and ten-year-old Kiba were walking Kagemaru and Akamaru outside the village wall. We'll march onward. Kiba ordered Akamaru barked in agreement. Naruto just shook his head, and Kagemaru was just following his father. After an hour of walking they realized they were lost and pretty far from the village. I'll check where we are. Naruto walked to a tree and was about to walk up when a massive fur-covered fist swung at him. He barely had time to dodge as it made contact with the tree bark. Kiba froze as he saw the beast. It was easily five times their size, arms like tree trunks, white gray fur, a bear's face and legs with a gorilla's body. The pups were barking trying to help, but it was focused on Naruto. Get the hell away from it now. Naruto heeded those words as he turned full speed grabbing the dogs and yelling for Kiba to run. It fell on deaf ears as Kiba was fixed to his spot. Akamaru squirmed out of Naruto's hands and ran to his partner biting the cuff of his pants in an attempt to pull him. The beast finally noticed the frozen boy and was barreling towards him. The pup gave up on trying to pull his partner. Akamaru leapt at the thing's face biting and scratching as it swung wildly. Naruto set Kagemaru down as it whimpered for him and ran to get Kiba. Get your ass in gear Kiba. The beast grabbed Akamaru and tossed him into a tree. Naruto saw this knowing he had to save the white dog. Four legs technique. Naruto didn't get on all fours, but his hands became claws as bones protruded from his fingertips, and eyes were feral. The fox was quiet as she knew she couldn't talk him out of saving the dog. He ran towards the creature as its back was turned. Jumping on its upper back dug his claws into its shoulder blades. The beast howled as Naruto drew blood. Kiba was slowly coming out of his stupor as he realized that Akamaru and Kuma were protecting him. He looked to his knocked out partner. Four legs technique. Kiba was on all fours running towards the beast twisting his body. Tunneling fang. Spinning at high speed hitting it square in the stomach. It stumbled as Kiba bounced off on impact landing on his butt leaving circular cuts on its gut. Naruto continued to try and does damage, but its hands soon found him pulled him off. Naruto tried to hold on and only succeeded in ripping out clumps of flesh. 
Naruto was thrown and felt his whole body prepare for impact as he felt the twinge all over. He hit the tree hard. Kiba jumped to where Naruto had landed with Akamaru in hand as Kagemaru ran up worrying about him. His hands covered in blood which he wiped on his jacket. Let's get out of here now. At his word they ran with the pups in hand. They ran for ten minutes before hearing a roar from behind. Looking behind they saw the monster following and gaining fast. It looked hell bent on catching them. We aren't able to outrun that thing. Kiba could tell by its stride. Naruto could release his seals and outrun it, but that would leave Kiba in danger. We'll have to fight it. Are you crazy that thing is too damn strong. They started dashing around trees which caused some distance, but was still in hot pursuit. It is big, but we're agile and I am definitely faster we just can't attack it head on. Sending chakra through the seals deactivating them he. The speed was instantly noticeable as he did a U-turn leaving Kiba with the dogs. The monster's eyes were fixed on Naruto. He dashed around as it swung and grasped at him. Tunneling fang was heard as a spinning Kiba grazed the thing's back causing it to roar in pain. Naruto dashed at ankles while it stretched in pain, trying to claw at the tendons. He was backhanded and sent skidding across the ground. Kiba took another chance and connected against the face then was swatted into a tree hard. Naruto was up flipping over its head. It strained itself trying to capture him midair. Naruto gripped its neck channeling chakra into his leg, slamming the beast to the ground. He was back to weighted speed as he tried running, but his ankle was gripped tightly luckily he legs were still protected by the iron chakra. Being held upside down he saw the damage Kiba did to its face as it was now blind on the left side. The eye was clawed out and had nasty gashes on the lip, snout, and ear. Naruto grabbed its thumb, pulled as hard as he could, and broke the thumb. Another roar of pain was heard as Naruto was dropped landing feet first and ran towards Kiba who was trying to nurse a gash on his arm. Ripping of his sleeve he wrapped the arm to stop the bleeding. The thing was writhing in pain and had less than half of its tracking if they wanted to get away now was the time. Kiba tried to get up, but let out a yell of pain realizing he sprained his ankle. Its usable ear perked and it spun around searching. Finally found the two boys. Roaring they turned their gaze to the red tinted monster. Naruto was worried he couldn't just drag Kiba around not know the full damage to his body, but he couldn't handle that thing alone. He then remembered, Shadow Clone Jutsu, five clones appeared which confused both the creature and Kiba. Two clones dashed to the creature's arms grabbing hold and focusing chakra to their whole body causing two pops to be heard as its arms were dislocated. Two more clones ran to its legs turning their claws into iron daggers stabbed the legs. The beast fell on its back as Naruto and his final clone ran up the tree. Jumping off they were directly high above its chest channeling chakra to their legs they fell with great speed and caved in its chest. Iron Kuma execution, they exclaimed as blood rushed out the beast mouth. Naruto can you hear me? Naruto grimaced hear the yelling fox. Yes I can hear you no need to yell Q-chan. I was trying to coach you through this fight, but your mind was so panicked I couldn't get through. You were training to be a shinobi you need to keep your mind calm and think clearly. Sorry Q Chan can we talk at home cause I need to get Kiba home. Fine because this is far from over Naruto. It took an hour to reach the village at their snail's pace, but once they got home they had to explain what had happened. Kiba was told not to say anything about Kuma having the knowledge of the shadow clone Jutsu and they heard the cry of Hikarumaru. A week after team assignments the warehouse was alive with noise and the clan was annoyed to say the least. Ever since Kuma took over the building he spent a lot of time doing who knows what. Naruto had put his nose to the grindstone since passing Kurinai's test and doubled it to maintain the warehouse since he now practically lived there. Soom's house two days after the team assignment Naruto was looking at his small puppets that were scattered around the room. He was working on two things that he rather be working on, in a more private location. Naruto noticed a rundown warehouse in the Inazuka compound empty, large, and sturdy. I should talk to Sume Chan. Talk to me about what? Sume was at the door with a camera hoping to catch another embarrassing moment. I would like to turn that warehouse into my personal workshop if you would allow. Naruto bowed to the clan head, who took a thinking pose. You'll have to pay for all utilities, repairs, and make sure it is up to code which will cost a lot of Ryo. Are you sure you can handle all of that? I can take a lot of solo D rank mission by having clones work them in Henge. Small money adds up. Sume was liking how determined he was. She nodded her head in approval. 
Maruto was happy he was going to have a private workshop and happy about how well the team was getting along. Academy two days ago, they will be here after lunch. So I suggest getting to know your new teammates because I'm off the clock. Aruka walked to his desk, grabbed an orange book and tried to hide it from the student's view. Bye. He disappeared in a swirl of leaves leaving the class to their own devices. It didn't take long for the classroom to devolve into an unorganized mess. Sasuke decided to take a walk followed by a flock of girls minus Ino who was talking to her team. Naruto was wondering how long he should wait before he showed that he knows a few elemental jutsus and was discussing it with his inner demon as Hakaramaru and Kagemaru were wrestling with Akamaru. Hinata was just sitting and getting to know Shino as the boy rarely talked to anyone without reason. Shino decided to talk to Kuma as well. Hello Inazuka-san, you seem deep in thought. May I ask what were you thinking about? When to tell people I have Jonin level skills, but I can't tell you that. What about focusing on how to train your partners? That gave him a new project beside physical training and chakra control he hasn't given them much ninja dog, air, and ninja bear thing training. Since he is not allowed to use Inazuka training on them, he will need to make up his own style. Maybe I can figure out a way around. Now is not the time to brainstorm answer the bug boy. I am thinking of how to train my partners since I am not allowed to use Inazuka style techniques beyond the four legs technique. Neither could see each other's eyes through the glasses. Shino raised a brow in intrigue and Naruto noticed. I have my guys hunt for food every other day. I will send Hikarimaru to catch rabbits, squirrels, or any other small and quick animal while keeping him on a strength regimen. He has the genetics to be stronger than most, but you want him above the norm and you want Hikarimaru to be prepared for faster enemies correct? Yes and I want to make sure once he is older he won't be a walking pin cushion. Kagemaru is more agile than his little brother and faster so I send him after bigger game. Such as? Nara clan's deer and elk. Naruto stated in a matter-of-fact tone. Now Shikamaru took interest in the conversation. Troublesome. So you're the one. I pay for the ones my boy kills don't I? Naruto was referring to the money he leaves with a note saying it was delicious. Hana and Sume always asked where he got the meat, but never complain after he cooks it. Yeah, yeah. Just tell us before you hunt our livestock. Shikamaru went back to pretending to listen to his teammates. Well, Kagemaru knows where to strike to bring down big game and sometimes I bring Akamaru. Hum, Shino seemed interested in his hand. What's up? Naruto looked back at Shino who had an eyebrow raised. Well my bugs don't like that taste of you. They say you're toxic, but you look healthy. Naruto's eyes widened behind his sunglasses. But Kayubi reminded him that no doctor actually made any real medical records. Why did your bugs taste me? We are going to be a team. Naruto waiting for him to continue, but it seemed that was his answer. Naruto looked at the clock thinking this was going to be a long day. Few hours later Hanada found a comfortable conversation that her and her teammates could discuss. A long conversation about sweets began. Hanada loved cinnamon rolls and ate them for a reward for her hard work. Shino has to moderate his sweets or his bugs would just run amuck, but he knows if they had their way Shino would be downing bags of sugar. Naruto was hesitant accepting any and all sweets, but Kuma was a fan of weird flavored gum seeing as he can't get his fix of ramen. The week they told him he couldn't eat ramen like he normally did was the worst week of the four's life. Naruto couldn't prank the village to keep his mind off which in his opinion was the greatest loss since the death of the fourth but the four who knew Kuma as Naruto had to cover up for him when they faced his wrath. Kakashi and Serutobi had their collections replaced with Yaoi, tobacco was laced with mild hallucinogens, all of Kakashi's masks were switched with striped panties, and his clocks were set three hours ahead. Anko had her shampoo replaced with dog semen since he had suppliers, dyes, and glue. Anko was ready to kill, but was stopped by the Hokage and Kakashi. Sume knew she was next and she warned him if he pranked her she would kill him, but Naruto took his chances with one prank that caused a mass panic in the compound when he covered the Inazuka clan members in pheromones. His rampage came to an end when they finally gave Anko the go-ahead to punish him which took a weird turn when she found out he purrs when someone rubs his cheeks, ears, or stomach. Long story short she has pictures of him in a cat maid outfit. Some people with John and jackets started filing and calling names and taking them somewhere else to talk. It started with Team 1 so he just had to wait for the 8th person to walk in. After the 6th Jonin left a woman entered. Sasuke and Sakura stood catching on to the numerical order, 
but were stopped when she raised her hand. Sorry your sensei is late I am Yuhi Kuranai and I am here for team 8. Kiba wasn't even paying attention, but he knew that his teammate Sakura felt embarrassed and Sasuke was annoyed. Roof 5 minutes later they sat facing Kuranai. Hikari was sitting in Naruto's lap, while Cage was on his head. Now that we are all here let's get to know each other. You all know my name. I like Genjutsu, my friends, and my little sister. Hanada had a light blush as Kuranai smiled at her. I dislike perverts, East, and those who would betray their friends. I wish to become the undisputed Genjutsu master. Now, why don't you continue Hanada? I hope she doesn't baby the girl, Naruto and Shino both thought getting the feeling she was overprotective. I I am H Hyuga Hanada. I like sea cinnamon rolls, am my family, and, Hanada gained a huge blush at whatever she was thinking. I dislike those who mistreat others. She gained enough confidence to say it with a bit of venom to say she hated those kinds of people. My dream is to unite the main and side branches, and become Na. Hanada started out strong, but at the end clamped her mouth shut and turned redder than a tomato. I can't believe I almost said that. You were so close Hanada. Kuranai knows of her crush on the blonde boy. If Hanada could ever tell Naruto how she felt Kuranai knew the boy would accept. She should just tell the boy. Shino knew of her crush so did Shikamaru, Choji, and Ino. They would be somewhere Naruto walk or run past and Hanada wouldn't be far behind. One time Ino found her passed out from a nosebleed mumbling something about a naked Naruto and ever since then couldn't look in Naruto's direction when he was facing her. Shino, your turn. I'm Abarame Shino. I like my insects, improving skills, and logic. I dislike entomophobic people and pesticides. Shino saw the confused look on their faces. Entomophobia is the fear of bugs and my goal is to perfect my clan. Kuma, I am Inazuka Kuma. I like prostitutes, gamblers, Hana Chan, Nako Chan, and my boys. He stated while hugging Hakaramaru who was still in his lap and petted Kagemaru. Kuranai had a tick mark as soon as he said prostitutes. I dislike Kiba, Anko Chan, Sume Chan, people who can't tell the difference between a weapon and its holster, and liars. Kuranai was slowly moving her hands to cast a genjutsu on Naruto, my dream is to become Chunin. Why do you like prostitutes? Shino asked, if it wasn't for prostitutes I would be dead. They treated me like family and protected my innocence. Gamblers were my main source of income. Hana chan and Nako chan because they are nice and as far as I know have nothing to blackmail me with. Hana in veterinarian office Hana sneezed, maybe Kuma kun is talking about me. She opened a drawer to pull a picture of him walking out the bath. He has no shame. Back to Naruto, so he isn't a pervert, and why do you dislike my friends? I love Kiba like a brother, but he has an annoying habit. Sume and Anko have some pictures of me. Hanada's mind went to the gutter and blushed. Shino figured they have them to keep him in line since he heard of the commotion in the compound. Kuranai started laughing as she remembered seeing those pictures she would hate them too if they took pictures of her like that. They said they wouldn't show anyone. Ha ha ha, I wished you looked into a mirror when she dressed you up. Shut it, Q Chan. He felt the fox do mock pout, then mutter something about finding a photo. Kuranai was feeling better knowing he was joking about not liking two of her closest friends. All right, now meet me at training ground 8 at 8 a.m. for your test. I assume this is to see if we are ready to become Genin, Shino stated in his monotone voice. Yes, the exam was to weed out those who couldn't use the basic jutsus that could save you in the midst of battle, but this is the true test to see if you're up to my standards. See you tomorrow. She shunshined away in a swirl of red leaves. See you tomorrow. Shino said and walked down the stairs. Bye Shino-san. Kuma-kun, will you help me train for tomorrow? When Naruto-kun comes back I want him to know I became stronger. Sure Hanada-chan, but how have you adapted the new fighting style? It is getting better, but why do you want me to learn it instead of gentle fist? Because it needs to change, the Hyugas are too set to not change their ways when there are flaws that could be exploited. Hanada took a worried yet interested thinking maybe the flaws were just hers. 1. Avoid the hands. Your clan's taijutsu focuses only on the hands to deliver a deadly and incapacitating blow so the remedy for that is not blocking the hands. What do you mean? Never let the hands touch you and if you're forced to block, block the forearms avoid the hands at all cost. She couldn't help, but think simpler said than done. 2. The style is way too easy to read. 
It is a straightforward fighting style which leaves no real room for deception. Although I may be wrong since I don't know everything about your clans only what is public knowledge and what you tell me. She couldn't help but see the critical flaws. 3. It is not suited for everyone in the clan namely you Hanada. Hanada deflated thinking Kuma was going to put her down. You think I'm a failure? This was the first time Naruto ever got mad at Hanada. You are not a failure and I am getting sick of you putting yourself down. Hanada was surprised at how Kuma was so angry at her. Hanada I am saying your clan has failed you and others in the clan with the main branch being too stubborn to accept blame. Hanada I care about you and want you to achieve your dreams. Thank you Kuma-kun. Inazuka compound hours later. The training session went well and if he had any say she was already better in her new style than the gentle fist. Look out Kuma-kun. It was the only warning as three big grey wolves tackled him and began licking his face. Not wanting to be left out Hakaramaru and Kagemaru joined in. I tried to warn you. This is what happens when you spoil them. Hannah let out a whistle making the Haimaru brothers jump off and sit at attention. I don't spoil anyone I just treat them how I would treat my kids. Naruto or rather Kuma was being ogled by older woman who saw how good he was with children. Some had even approached him saying see me when you're older or when you make chunin. You may not want me when I'm chunin. I am fun, loving, and ready to give them the attention they need, but stern when I have to be. I wouldn't mind some attention. Hannah whispered seductively to herself. What was that? Hannah blushed like mad thinking he heard her. No Kagemaru we are not hunting today, but we will train later. Hakaramaru we will work on a bit of speed. Thank you Kami, we are heading to the clinic and it is time for their checkup. Hannah pointed towards Naruto's partners. Okay. Follow them to the office guys. Kagemaru fell in line, but Hakaramaru was hiding behind his mother's back. Come on little bro. The black pup called out. I don't want to go. If you go and if you two are good boys you'll both get a treat when you get home. With that they ran off towards the clinic. Hannah gave a quick wave and left with the triplets following the two. Naruto got up continuing to the pet shop. So what have you come up with? I think I may have a way of making my guys stronger Q-chan, but I need some place more secluded. Oh cubby-kun just call them your little brothers or children. If you call them your children they would be the happiest creatures on earth. I'd be happier if you called me Kasan just once. Naruto had accepted her as one of his precious people, but hasn't as his mother. She began thinking back on his life to see if there was some way to make him call her mother, but saw the highest honor as sibling and closest to parent as grandpa which the Hokage holds. She may be over a thousand years old but she is not accepting Ba-chan. I think they would love that, but I don't really know I will think about it. Naruto summoned his jacket from the storage seal on his chest and wore it open. I wish Hakaramaru didn't hate me wearing jackets. He is a creature that normally spends its childhood attached to the mother's back. He prefers skin contact. It didn't take long to get to the store. That will be 50,000 for the 10 collars, 20 blank tags, and treats Kuma-kun. Thank you Anami-chan. Time to start working on project, loophole. Lame, power. Lamer, back door or reach around, sound too close to becoming porno tittle. Fine how about, project. Beast it sounds badass. It kinda does cubby. The next day training ground 8. Welcome to the training ground 8. Kuranai greeted her team. Naruto walked with Hakaramaru clinging to his back and Kagemaru on his head with Kiba and Akamaru right behind them. Hello Kiba-san aren't you supposed to be at training ground 7 for Kakashis? Oh I just answered my own question. Ni-san saw me waiting with my teammates and said I could come along to watch since I have three hours before he actually shows up. I am already regretting bringing you bro. You know Auntie Kiba is just having fun with you Ka-san. Ha, you're Auntie Kiba, that is hilarious. You should stop feeding into his gender confusion about humans. It is funny when it happens to someone else. Okay Kiba-san, but you must be quiet during part two of the test. She turns to face her team. My test has two parts the individual and the group. Hanada-chan you're going first follow me. Kuranai and Hanada walked far off out of sight five minutes later they come back with Hanada sporting a blush. Okay Shino-kun you're up. Same thing happened with Shino coming back two minutes later minus a blushing face. Come on Kuma-chan. She started laughing as a tick mark appeared on Naruto's face. See Nissan I knew Ka-san was a girl. Kiba didn't get Kuranai's joke but started dying when Hakaramaru said that. 
Our two San is a hundred percent alpha male little bro, Kagemaru stated as Naruto begrudgingly followed Kurenai. Naruto followed her far from the group to a large circle. Okay, get to the center and then I want you to walk to me. As soon as Naruto set foot in the circle his eyesight became blurry as an overlapping ghost circle started spinning around him. She placed me in a genjutsu. Yes and a very good one at that if it affected you this much. Why is it blurry? Your dense chakra prevents you from getting the full dose to make you completely hallucinate so you can still see the real world now walk and finish this part of the test. Naruto staggered a bit but walked to the center and back faster than Kurenai predicted he would. Very good Kuma-kun how did you manage to walk correctly when you didn't even try to dispel the genjutsu? My iron chakra bloodline keeps me from getting the full effect of the jutsu? He could be a good training dummy, I mean tester for new ones I learn, so are you immune to them? So am I immune to genjutsus? No, AS class would probably mess you up just the same, but if your chakra coil solidified it would crush, the foreign chakra and hypnotic genjutsus would work against your defense. Naruto repeated what she said, but replace you with me and you're with my. What are hypnotic genjutsus? I am not the teacher here asked Kurenai. The fox seemed to be angry at something. Kurenai sensei what are hypnotic genjutsus? Instead of forcing chakra into the victim to cast an illusion some use a medium like sound, visual, or using smell. A good example of visual would be the sharingan since their eyes spin, but visual is about any repetitive movement. Sound requires an instrument most common are flutes or bells, this form is used more for paralysis or to disorient. Smell is pretty much hallucinogens for the short answer, but it induces memories and affects reaction time. Visual is rarely used in the field because in battle unless you're in control of the tempo you can't use it. Kurenai stopped and turned to Naruto. How come you know of them, but not about them? I came across them in a book, but it didn't explain much. Naruto and Kurenai came back to the other to see Kiba talking to Shino of all people. I'm sorry, but come on man you got to know someone is going smack them if they see those bugs on their skin. It was not harming you so logically you had no reason to kill it. Let me guess his bugs tasted you and you saw it then wham dead bug? Yeah, Akamaru barked in agreement. You guys can talk about this later you three have the group test. Now find me, she disappeared. Hanada try and locate her. She nodded activating her by Akugan when suddenly she fell asleep. Hanada what happened? I was looking into the forest then noticed watches swinging from the tree limbs and then I felt tired. Hypnotic genjutsus, that's right Kuma. The disembodied voice of their sensei spoke to them. You three have to navigate my forest of illusions to find me at the center you have an hour to do so. Shino inwardly scolded himself for forgetting to place a bug on her. Kuma-san you and your partners take point. Try following a scent. Hikari and Kagemaru got off and started sniffing where she last stood. This way too, Ka-san. They say follow them. K keep your eyes down. Feeling embarrassed she fell for it, as the team followed after the two leaving Kiba behind. Well I am heading to get something to eat. Come on Akamaru. Inside the forest the forest was just a fourth of the forest of death and disorienting. Shino took over leading once Naruto came across the bell field. Inazuka training made him extremely susceptible to the melodies. Shino had his bugs place on each of their ear using the buzzing noises to counter the bells. Kagemaru hated the bugs and tried attacking them, Hakaramaru tried to stop him, but they ended up fighting each other and they lost the scent. Glorified flea hive. Shino sent bugs throughout the forest after 20 minutes his bugs came back, we head that way. You really need to communicate. Why do we have to go that? Naruto asked Shino. Some of my scouters didn't come back meaning there is a genjutsu there to hinder me in finding Kurenai sensei. Weird. Hey Q chan Aren't the Abarame bugs unaffected by all forms of genjutsu? Silences was all there was as the fox didn't answer. Q chan Q chan Q chan Naruto was about to head to his mindscape to see what was going on, but remembered that in their time varies drastically at times and he had a time limit. Kuma-san we have to locate Kurenai sensei Naruto followed his teammates with his partners attached deeper into the forest. Something's really off. They wasted 12 more minutes due to Abarame logic about not rushing through a trap-filled forest, but now they wasted 32 minutes just over half their allotted time to get to where Shino lost his scouts. Naruto could smell a faint stench he could only describe as the smell of blood. 
The forest took a drastic turn in looks as the trees were now dead and the smell became stronger. Th this pp place is. Naruto placed a hand on Hanada's shoulder to calm her. It is going to be okay Hanada-chan. She became calmed by his words because he spoke with the utmost confidence. We have to pick up the pace Shino we can't be too scared of our surroundings to complete the mission. I am being cautious. As you should be Gaki. Before Naruto could turn around a giant fist made contact with the center of his back. He slammed into a tree, but his body already braced itself. Naruto was able to turn and see his attacker. Mizuki. Before him was beast form Mizuki. How the fuck, are you here? Mizuki didn't answer as he charged towards Naruto. The former blonde now brunette flipped over the beast man's head only to be grabbed and slammed back into the tree uprooting it slightly. Mizuki launched fist after fist into Naruto's abdomen further pushing the tree. Naruto caught the former man's hand and using his strength snapped his wrist, as Mizuki howled in pain Naruto released his training seals and launched off the tree spearing him across the clearing. He jumped off and turned to where Hinata and Shino were. Guys you have to get out of here. Naruto looked and saw they were already gone. It seems your friends have abandoned you. Such a shame. The voice came from above warning him to move as his opponent landed causing a small crater on impact. Mizuki popped his wrist back into place as if it was nothing. Naruto brought out his blades from the seal on his glove. A katana with a green hilt which had a design of a mantis was in his right hand, and a short blade with a yellow hilt which had a bee design was in his left. Where did they go and where are Hikari and Cage? Count yourself lucky no one is here to witness you die like. Naruto stated as he charged towards Mizuki. Mizuki swung his fist as Naruto easily dodged as the speed advantage was in his favor, but Mizuki had experience to dodge some of Naruto's attacks and for some reason seemed way too calm as he didn't yell in anger at Naruto's insult. Cuts were being made, but were way too shallow to cause real damage. Mizuki didn't want to get close to even get deep wounds. Mizuki's defense was tighter than it was last time and his timing was getting better. Then a smile crept across his face, tunneling Fang, was Naruto's only warning as he jumped over the human projectile. Miss me Gaki? Actually you just missed M. Before he could finish he was backhanded by Mizuki. What the hell he was nowhere close to me to land a hit and he doesn't have the speed to close the gap. Naruto corrected himself landing to face the two. Iron Shadow Clone no Jutsu. A clone appeared next to Naruto. The clone traded its mantis for Naruto's bee and dashed towards Mizuki as Naruto went for Kuzan. The clone was cutting into Mizuki in close combat as his big body poorly adapted to the new tactic the clone used. The attacks were focused on his midsection avoiding stretching for strikes that would throw off its balance. Mizuki would swing and kick at the clone, but the clone would dodge and cut at the limb. You still getting used to your body cause you still suck. Again there was no rise of anger from Mizuki. Naruto was overpowering Kuzan in skill. Both knew Inazuka fighting style Kuzan more than Naruto, but they knew it involved getting close. As soon as Kuzan came close with the tunneling fang he struck with the mantis. The Inazuka was covered in cuts all over and bleeding. Wow you're weaker than Mizuki, even when he was normal runt. Kuzan didn't show any anger. What the hell I know being called a runt by anyone other than family is the biggest insult you can lob at an Inazuka. Mizuki was on his last legs as fatigue started to set in. The clone leapt far back and stared at him. Time to end this fight. It threw the blades at Mizuki. Shadow Blade clone no jutsu, a hundred blades appeared Mizuki covered his face and upper body, Shadow Bee Sting, forty blades impaled him, but he was still standing. Was that supposed to kill me? No. You know bees sting once, black strings from the clone's fingers attached to each blade. But hornets sting until dead blood marionette. Hornet swarm. The blades pulled from the ground in Mizuki's body. Its hand moved in blinding speed as the hundred blades carved into him. Kuzan had his tendons were cut and his movements were pretty much stopped. He was barely standing. Naruto stood where he was as the memories of the clone came to him. That was for trying to kill Urukani and me. Your partner is dead and going to follow if you don't tell me why you two teamed up. Naruto started walking towards him when a howl made him turn, when he turned back to see Kuzan had vanished, he then turned to where Mizuki's corpse should be, and it was gone as well. Something is really off which means, I am trapped in a fucking genjutsu which explains all abnormalities, big word for me and how Kuzan showed up I ended his career. 
I probably have been in it since entering or even further than that. If so then the test is to escape, but then how is this, a group test, unless they are also in one, and the purpose is to get out and help the others. How am I supposed to get out? He thought about his training and knew he was incapable of disrupting his chakra flow. Naruto was pretty much born with cage level chakra while others trained to the level learning to control what they had as they built it up. He would have to wait for someone to force chakra into him or, remember the feeling of death. Training ground 8 Naruto was waking up to the feeling of someone pushing on his chest and before he could ask what Kuranai was doing she placed her mouth on his. He said hey in surprise which made his tongue slip into her mouth. She got up and smacked him in the face. What the hell Kuma? What the hell me? You're the one who was kissing me. A blush appeared on his face. I was doing CPR, you had no pulse. That's how I get out of them. We tried to wake you up from it, but whatever we tried didn't work. Bitch put you in an A class that went up to S when she tried to undo it. First Hinata and Shino tried to help for a while. Your children tried to help then started bickering. Finally you simple got out of it yourself to a reward. She started laughing at his predicament. I want to punch you some more, but I have to say you all pass my test. Now you all are true genin. I have to go inform the Hokage so you have the rest of the day to yourselves. Real training begins tomorrow see you at home Hanada. Kuranai disappeared in red leaves. Hokage's office, so how did the young ones do? Failed. Pathetic, weak, snake food, every stopped and looked at the snake mistress. Not literally geez. Had, cough, promise, but cough, failed, waste of time. Since Kakashi isn't here past, they looked at her with surprise. Nai Chan, did you go easy because of Hanada? No Anko I didn't. Mine passed as well. Shikamaru is a tactical genius. Sorry I'm late a monkey stole my book and I had to chase him around the village. You were on time for that whole week and now you're back to being late. Anko, Kakashi, and Serutobi shuddered. So how did your team do? The Hokage spoke, changing the subject from that week. They passed. Kiba actually saw through my suggestion and picked up on my habit. Did Naruto pass? So, Asuma, Kuranai, and Kakashi's team have passed. Now you are a genin Naruto. Why do I feel I am forgetting something? Dismissed. Present day the noise died down as Naruto exited his warehouse with a smile. Project. Beast is complete. Somewhere in the village, Danzo Sama. Project. Beast is complete. The warehouse the day before the completion of Project. Beast. Leaving the clones to finish it up. Naruto had realized all things that belonged to the clone disappeared along with them. In order to make a puppet of bones it needed to come from his body. He summoned four iron clones. I need you two to hold me down and you two to rip out my skeleton. Sounds extremely painful boss are you sure you want to do this? I wouldn't have summoned you if I wasn't. Naruto turned his back to the clones as two grabbed his arms. Placing a guard in his mouth, the remaining clones drew out their claws digging them into his back grabbing ribs and began to pulling. Naruto was biting down hard as he felt his bones being pulled out. As they pulled he was making a replica and it took an hour for the skeleton to come out. Hurt like hell, but we will need more in case of mistakes and for the project itself good news that I can use clone skeletons as practice. A bone gauntlet appeared on Naruto's hands with drill bits and blades. That is cool how you make power tools boss. Is it a sign that I am a lonely individual, if my clones need to comment on everything I do? You do have psychological scars that need to be worked through such as your repressed anger for one. This mindscape you have me living in is a reflection of how you truly see your life, but it is also a sign of your mental strength seeing as they only manifest in people with strong minds. Yamanaka clan books do go into detail about it. Placing a drill bit in the socket on the tip of his index, wrapping blood around the base to rotate it Naruto was proud of his achievements. His gauntlet is the ultimate work tool. Q-chan, remind me to learn about construction. Okay Cubby-kun. You plan on doing it all yourself? Yes, this is going to be my private research meaning I need to be the only one who knows its layout and thanks to the Inazuka's sensitive nose the sewer system barely come through the compound. Let's begin. Naruto paused as a clone's memory replayed in his mind. Naruto pulled a tape recorder out of the storage seal on his chest. Side effects for using pure Q-chan's chakra for transformations increased aggression and a permanent increase in size upon returning to normal. 
Cage and Hikari are twice their original size and since they were exposed to pure concentrations of mine and Kyu Chan's their eyes have changed. Left is blue and right is red. Konami Chan, A.N. Cat's new name, one, can only handle my chakra and can only use the form I dubbed domestic beast while my kids, I kind of like calling them that. Can use that and feral beast form, but given time I can get her to that point. Animals are unable to use normal jutsu, but are able to use elemental. Testing their affinities, Kagemaru has fire, Hakaramaru has earth, and Konami Chan has lightning. I will have the clones make the collars accordingly. Must have them checked out by Hannah Chan in case of more negative side effects. She seems distracted when I'm around, doesn't she? Ask her out for a date. I mean, you should get to. Screw it, ask her out, or I will give you nightmares. Naruto gained sweat drop at his inner demon's words. Okay. Okay, I will. Cough. Also, the council wants to meet with me first thing in the morning. About what, boss? Without the outlet of pranks, Naruto had been working non stop to improve himself to make sure he passes the upcoming Chunin exams, which was now several months away and may have brought a bit of focus on him. He would leave a clone working in the training ground while he would work in his warehouse, which is his personal training facility. Weights with gravity, weight, and resistant increase seals were to increase his physical strength. Tsunade had perfected infusing chakra into the muscles breaking the limits of human strength which she doesn't go into in any of her medical books stating she will only teach it to women, but the limit to the strength is how much chakra the person has. Naruto plans on learning her technique, but since he can't go off searching for her he has to work on the physical. Through a bit of research and help from the fox Naruto learned he has Hyperion constitution, an. Got it from Kangu Bancho. His muscles are more compact and won't become ridiculously huge like the Rakage. Who published a book about his workout ethics that has a chapter that says, to toughen up your skin don't use doors use walls. He is a juggernaut that is a fast as hell. Another flash of a clone's memory. Dinner is ready have to go or face Sumei Chan's wrath. Naruto let out a whistle making Cage, Hikari, and Konami appear before him. Naruto-sama. Why have you called us for? The cat asked her master, A.N. She looks like Yoruichi's cat form with blue eyes. Ka san, can I climb on your back? Hakaramaru asked sheepishly as he was now the size of a full grown gorilla, but not full grown ONBU. He kind of didn't like the fact that he was now bigger than his parent. I can carry your weight, but you would still be scrapping the ground and you three need to stay here until tomorrow by then your collars will be ready. I cooked the boar for you three. Which I brought down Konami chan. Also, I can still climb on two san. Kagemaru stated trying to impress the feline and tease his little brother. Cage was now up to Naruto's knee in height. Yes you did mister I have a thing for cats. Two san, Kagemaru whined in embarrassment as the three laughed. Then don't tease your brother. See ya later tomorrow kids. Naruto shunshined away, in a swirl of crimson flames. Sume House Dining Room Naruto appeared before the people who took him in Sume and a few knew who he really was, but when the time comes how will others react? Naruto and Kiba Bond was thicker than blood at this point. To have a brother that looked up to him made Naruto strive harder. He trained Kiba on when Kiba was off leaving a clone with him. Hannah didn't have the feel of a sister she would be outside the bathroom holding a towel and a toothbrush saying, I need to get ready for bed which stopped after Sume told Naruto he couldn't walk around the house buck naked after baths anymore because of something about needing to sleep. An. Rooms are next door to each other. What about his teammates? Trust is a key component to teamwork and could he really trust them without being honest about who he is? If he was going to come clean he wouldn't do it inside the village walls. Kuma-kun where are your partners? They are spending the night in the warehouse Sume-chan. Hannah-chan. Would you mind doing a check up on them tomorrow after the meeting? Sure, Kuma kun, but their next check is supposed to be at the end of this week. Why the move up? They had a growth spurt, and I want to make sure they are all right. They're spending the night to finish up some training. Naruto sat down to a plate set for him. That reminds me, Nissan, Yuta, and Konohamaru want to spend the night tomorrow. There is going to be trouble. Konohamaru and Yuta follow Naruto, Kuma around like true little brothers that dislike one another remembering meeting his mini-me, with a smile. Flashback Naruto was taking his picture for his ninja license. Naruto wore his bandana and sunglasses leaving the only distinguishable feature his red whisker marks. So Kuma san you are officially a shinobi of the hidden leaf. I am proud to. You're mine old man. 
A boy with a long scarf entered the room, that before he truly entered he stepped on his scarf face planting. Honorable grandson, are you okay? I'm fine not like some jerk can hurt me. Naruto had a tick mark appear as he knew the boy was taking about him. Watch your mouth midget. The boy grew a tick mark at the comment about his height. Do you want to go Becca? Naruto tapped him on the head before he could finish the sentence knocking the poor boy out. Sorry about your grandkid G, Hokage-sama, but he is like some brat. Serutobi let out sigh. I'm afraid that is the civilians and others doing Kuma-san. He motioned with his eyes to the man who came in with his grandson. Hokage-sama, how can you talk so nonchalantly talk to this punk who just assaulted your relative? Shut up you glorified ass kisser I'm out of here. Two hours later walking back home Naruto saw a square rock following him. Kid you have to do better than that. That proves you're perfect to teach me. Ebisu Teme just pretends to not see me or at least I hope so. Also, when we spar, he doesn't even try to hurt me and no matter what bad thing I do no one punishes me. And if you need more he can't even keep up with me a little kid. Do you want real training? If I'm going to train you have to show me something. Follow me kid. Naruto lead the child for three hours through alleyways forcing the boy to climb, crawl, and run just to keep up. When he finally got to the training field where Naruto finally stopped he looked like he was put through the ringer. Good you aren't a quitter. Now let's start training. Naruto made the boy work harder than well anyone who trained him before. By the end he was ready to sleep. You did good Konohamaru-kun. Without warning the boy started crying Naruto was about to panic until. T thank you. You're the only one besides the old man. My mom died giving birth to me and my dad was killed in the field leaving the old man to name me. He named me after the village so people would know my name, but all they ever call me is. Honorable grandson. Get away from him you thug. The name is Kuma and you could be arrested for what you are doing. For what? For kissing a kid's ass so hard, you're sucking the life out of him. A tick mark appeared as Ebisu got into a stance. You want to fight Jenin? I am a special John and Yo. Before he could finish, Naruto gave him an uppercut, sending him across the field out cold. Come on, Konohamaru, we're out of here. Flashback end. Those two are rivals in training, and Yuda doesn't like it when Konohamaru says he is going to defeat me. Kiba laughed, knowing them. No one beats my niece in the Iron Kuma. Naruto was flooding D ranked missions with the number of clones he made to take them but for a bit more cash he would take part in sumo wrestling to get used to fighting bigger opponents. That was the plan in it at the beginning, but Naruto overpowered them in pure strength and with the knowledge of his bloodline became known earning him the title Iron Kuma. You're older than me Kiba. Sume-chan what is the meeting going to be about? She had a look of disappointment laced with a bit of hope. It is about something you have a say in and I'm leaving it at that. Ask out Hana-chan now. I want to see their faces, and remember nightmares. Cough, Hannah Chan, cough. Yes Kuma Kun. This was the first time anyone saw him this nervous. W would you, cough. Would you like to, go out some time maybe? Shock was apparent on their faces, but was replaced with smiles and Sume saying about time. Hannah said yes and Kiba made a joke about how weird it was that his brother and sister were getting together earning him a smack from them both. Well that was fun for about two seconds. Wait here. Sume left and came back with a bottle. Here Hannah Chan this is for just in case. In case of what Ka-san? You don't want me to tell you. Tell me Ka-san. Naruto began looking at the bottle and started remembering his unconventional childhood. I've seen a bottle like that when I used to hide in closets of, oh crap. Just tell Nay. Fine it is for HMMHHMM. Naruto had his hands over her mouth to keep her from talking. Soon looked at him with a look that said you already know about it. Naruto looked away in a blush. I'm staying in the warehouse for tonight. Hana we will talk tomorrow about our date see ya. Before anyone could say a word Naruto shunshined. Back in the warehouse, I thought you were going to see us tomorrow Tucson? Quiet. I have to hide out here and since you want to be smart with me I should tour. I mean train, no I mean torture you all a bit. Not fair Nissan was the one that said something. It is called collective punishment and it will be good for you three to work on the transformations getting used to the forms. Also, when the collars are ready you will need to get used to using them as well. Next morning Naruto was walking to the council chamber with his three partners planning on talking to Hana after. This will be a pain if I have to deal with the civilians. I have an idea about what this is about. 
What is it? It might be what they tried to do to your mother, but she fell in love with your father. How did that stop them from whatever they tried? Women get pregnant once for nine months and as long as they planned on having kids it worked out better than the council original plan as it merged two formerly powerful clans. Naruto had a contemplative look as he pieced together the clues she was dropping. So if they wanted her to pop out kids why would they treat me like shit? I feel your sadness Q-chan and you are not the reason my life was hell, but if I am part of two clans why not turn me into a breeding stock? To many the only thing known about the two clans were their knowledge so when the ones that could teach are gone. It leaves a child with nothing to offer, assholes. Wait you said known about and two clans what are you not telling me? Inazuka-san, are you listening because I said the council is ready for you? Yes sorry I was thinking. Naruto walked into the chambers and saw the surprised look he wanted from Sume as she saw the growth spurt, he mentioned, but she was happy he was wearing the jacket she bought for him again. So what is this about Hokage-sama? Serutobi let out a sigh. We are here to discuss a CRA. I assume you know what it is? Yes I do and I would like to decline. Why would you wish to decline such an honor of rebuilding your clan? Naruto looked at the man who spoke and when his gaze landed on him Naruto felt anger he never felt before. Danzo-sama has a point young one. Your bloodline obviously comes from whoever was the other clan and as Inazuka-sama has stated they have lost contact meaning they are gone or have faltered on their side of the deal. What is their fate? Naruto decided to answer that question. They are dead and I am orphaned. At that moment Sum and Serutobi had a look of oh crap. Then let us put it to a vote Hokage-sama. He let out a sigh. Fine. But as same as for Sasuke it will only be put into effect after he reaches the level of Chunin and has a year to find his own wives then they will be chosen by the councils. All in favor for him being placed a CRA raise your hand. Everyone raised their hands except for Sume and Serutobi who just looked at all the hands. So you all are going to force me to marry girls who don't love me for me. Sorry Kuma-kun it is my fault for not having you fill out adoption forms because you were an orphan the village has legal guardianship and since you are genin you are still within civilian jurisdiction. She then turned her gaze to the others again. You just heard him decline and you are forcing him. I want some answers. Asuma answered first. I know you and Tu San are against this, but if from what I hear he is ridiculously strong. That's because I work at it. Naruto replied to the head of the Hokage's clan. In order to withstand your iron bloodline that makes you a living statue. From what we saw of your training it you are an invulnerable armored soldier. Imagine if our shinobi had that ability. Sochi I know you haven't gotten over your brother's death, but his abilities are not going to change that. Konohamaru realizes that more than you and he is eight. Asuma leveled a glare at his father that didn't phase the Hokage. That kid never met him and if you or Kuma ever die he would feel the same way I do. Naruto clenched his fist as the Hokage slammed his on the table before he could reply Naruto did. We are shinobi and so was your brother. Death is in the job so stop your bitchin and grow the fuck up. His three partners gave their signs of agreement. Naruto was ahead of many in maturity when it came to death of others and he was making sure Yuta and Konohamaru knew what they were in for. Before Asuma lost it about Serutobi ended the fight before it started. Enough, was all that needed to be said to silence the two. Since it has been decided Kuma-san please come to my office and feel out the papers. They both shunshined away. The office moments after appearing Serutobi told the Anbu to leave and activated privacy seals. What right do they have to force me? Kagemaru, Hakaramaru, and Konami backed away from their enraged master and parent. I am sorry we should have had you feel out the adoption forms, but it is too late for that remedy. Serutobi had a defeated look on his face until he remembered the meeting. When I was referring to you for the vote I didn't say Kuma I used he. Yes. Well Kuma doesn't have a CRA, but you do. What's the difference? A major difference because you are signing the form with your real name. Naruto thought about what he just said and a smile broke out on his face causing his partners to return to his side. It goes into effect after you reach Chunin and by then. I get it. Who would volunteer or force their child to marry the boogeyman? You still need a minimum of five wives. Once you have the minimum I will reveal your heritage, but there is a far more important matter I want you to take care of for me. A serious look came across his face. You have stealth skills to elude whoever you want. You put veteran Anbu to shame. That is the main reason I am even thinking about this. He laid a folder on the table. 
Naruto picked it up saw the layout of an abandoned lab, known traps, reports from past surveillance, who it belonged to, and who he thinks is using it now. This is an S-ranked recon mission for finding evidence for me. Looking at over the documents didn't like he would be going in almost blind. I want to be out of the village when my clones go in because I am not setting foot inside a potential death trap. I need Anbu class gear meant for recon and assassination nothing that would leave noticeable wounds. If you find solid evidence implicating him bring it to me immediately. You have a week to prepare, a man named Tazuna wants an escort mission back to the land of waves after he arrives from a small growing trader's village, but he is lying about danger so I am sending both you and Kakashi's teams. We are going to charge him the C rank rate he was a very famous builder, but prepare for B. The gear you have requested will be at this location. Now fill this out and prepare. Naruto filled out CRA form and prepared to leave. Do you know why Danzo pisses me off so much? The Hokage took a contemplating look. I wouldn't put it past Danzo to have tried something to get you on his side by force. I would have Yamanaka clan look through your memories, but they are known gossips, and it would blow your cover. Walking down the streets Sume was walking home after the discussion. Hiyashi on his elder's order was told that if it came to a vote, vote yes. Shikaku simply said we need more of people like Kuma. Kind-hearted, speaks the blatant truth, his morality is unquestionable, and he had no doubt Kuma would find those who loved him for him there was an air about him. Chozu agreed, but Inoichi said he didn't know why he just felt he needed to and left with a puzzled look. Aburame said something, but she tuned him out thinking it was something logical. At least Hana will most likely be alpha female. Being held by his strong arms, my hands tracing his chest, caressing every muscle until I get to that nice tight as, no bad sume. Hana's vet office, Kuma-kun what kind of training have you been putting them through not that it is bad it is actually extremely good. Compared to previous checkups they are healthier. My knowledge of Hakarimaru species is limited to what you know, but from what I can tell he is going to grow bigger than I predicted. Kagemaru is going to be the size of a horse and Konami is going to be big for a cat. Feel like letting me in on your secret? I would be willing to trade, but I rather focus on our upcoming date. So you get an answer and you gain confidence? Hannah crossed her arms and a playful smirk graced her face. I'm always confident. I was just being threatened at the time. Love you too Sochi. I like it when you're confident. Hannah walked up to Naruto placing an arm around his neck and removed his sunglasses revealing his baby blues with a dark blue ring. I love your eyes. She stared down into his as he looked into hers. You know you are very lucky, and so damn why. She seems extremely affectionate now, not that he was complaining. She's staking her claim and from what I remember when you two get married she has to leave a bite mark on you and you on her. Then grandkids. Aren't you getting ahead of yourself I haven't even told her who I really am. Would she really accept me? Inazukas are very loyal and she will understand the deception. Ooh, please let them have your whiskers. Naruto felt the fox start doing a jig. Hannah Chan, I made reservations at a nice restaurant for tomorrow night. Hannah smiled and gave him a kiss on the cheek. Nissan, we are getting a Tucson. The other two tackled the Anba for interrupting the mood. Naruto had a sweat drop as he heard, and Hannah just giggled. Hikari still doesn't get human genders. Come on kids, see ya Hana chan Warehouse moments later, Kujimaru, you and Konami-chan talk to the animals in the area smaller the better. Come back here in an hour. The two set off to gather info. Hikarimaru you hang out here and wait for them. So what is the plan? Send three clones and leave one here to immediately rely the info if they are made. Two shadow clones and two iron clones, you keep us in contact so we don't have to use radios, and we use that. So that's why you are sending shadow clones so they can focus on. Yes it will help navigate the lab, but for now we prepare some seals to store extra chakra for them and disruption seals. But you haven't tested control on the human body. Sometimes you need to do in field test and all things that belong to clones leave with the clones. It will leave no trace like the victim died from natural causes. Hokage's office a week later, Kakashi I do have a C rank mission for your team. But it will be a joint mission with Kurenai's team. Kakashi smiled behind his mask. Yes, Kuma is coming. Akamaru bark his agreement as he would get to hang out with his cousins since they haven't been able to. Kakashi had been running them ragged trying to get them to bond that wasn't really taking since Kiba didn't trust Sasuke and Sasuke was a Sakura in both of their opinions was useless. 
Kakashi thought it would be easy to have them get along maybe a mission outside of the village would do them some good get away from the kiss asses, rivals, and find something to bond them. We don't need more useless things tagging along we already have too. Yeah those sunflower seeds you call nuts. Hey Kiba long time no see. Kuma entered with his team Sasuke played it off as beneath him to dignify it with a response, but he couldn't really think of a comeback because again no one has dared to insult him like Kuma. Kiba turned around and was surprised to see not Kuma, not the two's growth spurt, but a cat draped on his shoulders. Naruto noticed his look. What's the matter cat got your tongue bro? Now Kiba didn't hate cats he was scared of them. Flashback. Four-year-old Kiba was walking down the street when Tora landed on him. Because of Inazuka's ability to understand animals he heard what the cat said. Come any closer and I will end this boy's life I am not going back to that woman. I want tuna and a carriage to take me to Sanagakure. An empty threat at the time and the only one who could hear her was Kiba. Kiba had very little, pretty much non-existent knowledge of cats so as far as he knew the beast could fulfill that promise. The experience scarred him. Flashback end. Why is that thing on your shoulders? Kiba hid behind Sakura. You don't like Konami-chan. The cat rubbed against her master's cheek purring and getting a purr from him. That is so cute. The four girls in the room thought. Naruto took a step forward towards Kiba, but Kiba then darted behind Kakashi. Okay Kiba, Konami-chan, off please. Yes Kuma-san, she hopped off and joined the three partners in play. Good she remembered to call me Kuma in the presences of an Inazuka. Now are you going to talk to me because I have a gift for you? As long as that cat stays away from me Nissan. A tick mark appeared on Naruto's head. Get him Konami-chan. Kiba looked frantically for the cat only to find it napping on the couch. This caused all of the people in the room to have a sweat drop thinking Kuma was serious. Naruto started laughing at Kiba's reaction. What's Ka-san doing Nisan? Uncle is afraid of Konami-chan and Tusan was teasing him, with that Hikarumaru tackled his parent by surprise. Hikarumaru? You don't tease auntie, Ka-san, that's right, wait what? Ha you accepted it. Naruto laughed again as he stood up with Hikari on his back which made him extremely happy to be on his parents' back even though he had to work to keep himself from touching the ground. The group was confused, but Kuranai decided to end whatever was going on. We are here for the mission. Send in Tazuna please. An old man walked through the door taking a swig out of a jug. He said his greetings, he couldn't complain since he was getting a small army for a small price. Alright get your gear and meet at the gate in two. Kuranai said, but everyone cut a glare at Kakashi except Hanada, Tazuna, and Shino. Konoha's gate. In order for Kiba to be near Naruto, Konami had to be 10 feet behind, but she had Hikari and Cage to keep her company while Naruto spoke to his cat fearful brother. All the while shooting glares at the boy who forced her from her favorite perch. Man Nissan thanks. How did you afford it? Kiba was thankful for the gift. I have been working my ass off. Lie clones are doing all the work. To build up my bank, which are in accounts the council can't touch once my identity is revealed. To bias this gear. Keep it hidden under your clothes. Why aren't you going to wear yours? Kiba looked at his brother who was wearing his black Inazuka style jacket with orange streamline and white fur which was open as always. Inazuka rule outside of battle a member has to show their fangs. It didn't take long for the rest to gather at the gate the person they had to wait on was Tazuna which surprised a few in the group who thought Kakashi would be the late one. Alright since everyone is present let's head. Kuranai was interrupted by one of her best friends Hana. Hana why are you here? Hana ignored her friend and walked to Naruto who had a shamed look. She grabbed his face and gave him a passionate kiss. Kiba made gagging noises as Kuranai and Hanada had a ping of jealousy which neither could explain why. Shino looked on with the collar a bit higher than normal. The kiss broke Naruto gave a quick slug to Kiba's shoulder and Hana slapped him in the back of his head before returning her gaze back to Naruto. I understand everything and I have to think about it. Naruto smiled at her that gave off a warm feeling. We'll talk when I get back. Woods near the lab, three figures hiding near the entrance. Hyu chan says move in before sundown and from the cage and Konami's info there is a crack rats used to use to get into, disposal. They stopped since whatever they were disposing of was too toxic to eat, transform and head out. Hyubi told the three what the iron clone said and they transformed, too, into rats dragging gear that was cloned and headed towards the, secret entrance. 
Lab disposal the clones made it through, but were hit by a stench transforming back. The ground felt odd they looked at what they were standing on. What the hell are these things? It is nice to get out of the village. Sakura exclaimed as Tazuna looked at them funny. These kids never left the village before. Have they ever been in a real fight? Tazuna was really concerned as their blood would be on his hands, but he has to think of his village. Sakura turned a bit embarrassed. We have Tazuna-san. For my team this is our 10th C-ranked mission. Kurenai stated to put to rest Tazuna's concern, but it angered Team 7's Uchiha. How have you three been given that many C-ranks when this is our first? Sasuke demanded more than asked. Naruto looked at the last loyal Uchiha with an annoyed look on his face thinking back to how Itachi would speak highly of his little brother. There is a minimum of 15 D-rank missions you have to do before your first C-rank, but your sensei decides when you start doing missions and how often you go on them. Naruto stated with his arms crossed. C-rank missions are when few genin get their first kill due to bandits, but most don't get that until they reach Chunin and go on B-rank missions so the Hokage has to be sure that the genin going on these missions are mentally prepared for that possibility of death be it the bandit or themselves. The Uchiha seemed to scoff at the notion that he could die at the hands of some bandit. The most arrogant saying ever made was, only an Uchiha could defeat an Uchiha, and many of them lived by that forgetting about Madara's defeat by the first in the war which they lost. I'm more prepared for this than Yudobi. Sasuke couldn't understand why Kuma pissed him off so much. Also, you all have barely proven to me that you three can work together long enough to handle protecting anyone. Hopefully this danger will show you three that you need to work with others although all the blame falls on Sasuke's arrogance, Kakashi stated not looking up from his book. Kuranai was speaking to Hanada trying to get her to relax before dropping back to Kakashi's position. Hanada was always nervous going into a mission, yet she has proven she could handle herself when the time comes. As the eleven walked past a puddle Naruto got a mischievous look. He turned around stopping the group. Kuma-kun what are you do, eep? Hanada asked before turning back as Naruto pulled out his third leg. Kiba was laughing at their reactions growing up with Kuma he knew Kuma didn't care if he was around women he was just comfortable with his body. Kuranai and Kakashi kept a composed face as they knew what he was up to, but Kuranai turned around slowly to not watch. Sakura just stared as Shino pulled out a camera and coughed every time the click noise was made. Naruto was peeing on the puddle, yet it was only hitting the younger brother. Stay calm little bro there are two Jonin with them we can't attack. The little brother was becoming extremely pissed off and was about to lose it when the stream went over to his big brother. We kill, no more talk we kill. No we don't have the skills to face those two so let us wait and regroup with Zabuza Sama. Okay with me getting peed on, but when it's you we kill. Naruto's stream died and he shook off the excess. Naruto turned to his sensei with a look that said I tried. I guess they won't be goaded into attacking but we now have an early warning. Night Tazuna was drunk and no one wanted to carry him they all wanted to just get there. Four tents were set up. Kakashi and Tazuna shared one. The Uchiha thought it underneath him to bunk with his comrades set up his own personal tent. Guess it is just us guys sharing a tent. Naruto stated loud enough so Sasuke could hear. The cat is staying outside right? Kiba's eyes pleaded, but Konami's glared. I was unable to be on my master's shoulders all day and I will be damned if I can't sleep in the same tent. Her sleeping spot was on Naruto's stomach which he would rub throughout the night and she would only give up the spot to Kagemaru or Hikarumaru when they had a nightmare, but other than that it was her spot. Kiba then volunteered to keep first watch and Akamaru followed his partner shaking his head. So Shino-kun let's get some sleep. Naruto turned to enter the tent when he heard Hanada speak. Kuma-kun Shino is, going to the restroom first. I will meet you in the tent. Naruto nodded and went in a very large tent followed by his three partners. Shino turned to Hanada. I will tell him, but it would be rude to leave him alone in a tent. It was said in the usual stoic tone, yet Hanada could hear a lecherous undertone around rude. Shino waited a while before entering the tent. Hanada had a quick blush, ping of jealousy and enter the tent Kuranai and Sakura was in. Morning Naruto had a weird dream he was cracking a safe with a big squishy dial that moaned as he got the numbers right. He awoke to see Shino was gone. Exiting and resealing his tent he saw Shino leaving the girl's tent. Shino. Why are you coming out the girl's tent? I was in there because I am a. Out the way n-i-i-s-a-a-a-a-n. Naruto was pushed to the ground by a frantic, half-naked Kiba who was running from a very pissed, 
wet Konami followed by laughing Cage, Hikari, and a worried Akamaru. Naruto stood up dusting dirt off. Excuse me while I go save Kiba. Naruto dashed off. Kiba used a towel for once Baka. Nearing a river Kiba had a few scratches and was walking ten steps ahead of Naruto who was holding Konami while Kagemaru was draped over the shoulders of Hikari. Why am I carrying you Nissan? Because I am your Nissan and I would do the same for you if you weren't so fat. Hikarimaru had a tick mark as rolled over squashing cage. Sakura walked up next to Naruto. So Kuma-san how was your night with Shino? Naruto gave her an extremely confused look as Shino, Hanada, and Kurenai came closer to listen. It was like any other night I did have a weird dream I was fiddling with something soft. Kurenai looked at Shino and mouthed something that made Shino turn to hide a blush. Naruto held Konami out in front turning her to face him. Konami-chan are you getting fat? Scratch, bonk, bonk, bonk Naruto had scratches as Kurenai, Sakura, and Shino were nursing their hands. What is his head made of? Naruto looked at Konami who decided to walk on her own. Sorry Konami-chan for saying such a thing. The cat nodded and continued walking as Naruto turned to the three who decided to hit him. Kurenai-sensei is my teacher so she is given a right to correct me in such a manner, but you two only get one. We are coming up on the river where we will take a boat to, oh no. Tazuna froze as he saw the small boat and a man were bifurcated. Sakura paled as she saw the man's torso lying on the ground near the water and barely kept herself from throwing up. I smell my piss. You two do know that it means both of you are my bitches. A rock that was in front of Naruto puffed in smoke revealing two shinobi connected by a chain ran around Naruto. With an unseen smirk due to masks they ran towards the other genin. Now you're dead fuck, they felt tension that should have been their chain cutting through him, but they couldn't move forward. They turned to see their chain wrapped around what could only be described as a metal statue. The Demon Brothers, Kakashi said with mock surprise. Why are two B-ranked missing nin trying to kill us? Well I get Kuma he peed on both of you. They weren't too surprised they were noticed by the Jonins of the group. You think this is a problem? One of the masked men asked as they heard a click and one detached running towards Sakura. Kakashi looked on to see what would be her reaction or the rest of his team. Sakura froze seeing the man run towards her, Kakashi saw that Sasuke was just watching with a sick grin. Hanada raced to help the girl tackling her as the clawed gauntlet swiped at them. Sasuke made his move as the man was paying attention to the two he delivered a kick to the man's head sending him towards the river. Naruto felt the chain start unwrap as the other start to move away from him. Naruto grabbed the chain filling it jerk as the man came to an abrupt stop. Tunneling Fang was heard as Kiba slammed into the shinobi tearing him in two, his body dispelled to show a destroyed log. Where did he go? Kiba asked as he landed on all fours and feral looking. Naruto stopped channeling chakra to his skin making it become its original color. Taking a whiff he pointed to where the other had landed. Both were standing with the one rubbing his head. We can't take them all we are having too much trouble with the kids and if that is any indication we would lose badly if the Jonin get involved. A hand went up and all of them heard something heading towards the builder fast. Naruto released his seals not taking a chance and tackled the builder taking the wind out of him as a large blade passed over them embedding it halfway through a tree. That brat as fast as he your student, copycat, Kakashi or is he the, mistress of illusions, Kurenai's. A disembodied voice called out. Demon of the hidden mist Zabuza why are you here? Why is he here at the most we expected Chunin level resistance, but now this has just become an A-rank mission. Everyone turned to where the blade was embedded to see a tall man standing on the handle. He was smirking at the genin letting his killing intent wash over them. Hanada, Shino, and Sakura fell on their butts as they stared in terror. Kiba bit into his hand to calm himself posing to fight, but he really wanted to flee fast. Naruto and Sasuke were standing, but it brought back traumas for them both. A blank Anbu mask flashed before Naruto's eyes and rage began building. Mindscape. The QB was in her human form hoping to get through the bars to hug her child, but an invisible force kept her from passing through and rushing to his side. His body stood still in the water when he was in the real world. She tried calling out to him, but she was drowned out by a banging. Around the corner of her cage was a hallway that only led to one door covered in seals, chains, and boards. 
Every bang caused boards to crack as the ink on the seals changed to form twisted, sinister, looking smiley faces. She clasped and began praying. Please hold he is not ready to remember. I need to find his happier memories. In the real world, Naruto rubbed his head as he felt a painful migraine unbeknown to him. He was covering his eyes that were glowing red through his sunglasses. Sasuke was trembling looking up to Zabuza with an overlay of his brother he knew he was unprepared to face him yet and to die at the hands of some missing nin would bring shame to his clan. Sasuke brought the blade from his pouch and started bringing up to his throat. Kakashi noticed both of them, Kuma, Sasuke nothing is going to happen to either of you. You have my word, he turned back to look at the man. You are outnumbered, you should really think about surrendering or just leaving. A smirk could be seen through his bandages. I can take Kakashi and Kuranai, but those two brats could pose a problem if they try to get involved. Haku will have to keep them busy. He brought a hand to his lips and whistled. In a matter of moments another shinobi or kunoichi hard to tell with the gender-neutral outfit was standing in front of the tree. Whoever it was they were wearing hunter nin gear. What is your order Zabuza-sama? Keep those two brats out of my way. As you wish. Kakashi raised his hand to his eyes revealing his Sharingan to the surprise of their resident Uchiha. Shino, Kiba handle the demon brothers, Kuma and Sasuke the fake hunter Nin, and Sakura Yu and Hinata keep the bridge builder safe. Cage, Hikari, Konami protect him as well. Naruto ordered his partners and Kiba ordered Akamaru. Zabuza vanished with his sword and appeared with the hunter Nin next to the demon brothers as they prepared to engage the Konoha ninjas. Both sides were still as to size up one another and they sprang to life. Zabuza backpedaled onto the river as the Kakashi followed him. Kurinai stayed on the shore to cast Genjutsu. Zabuza ran through some hand signs. Water style. Riptide vertex no jutsu, water began to spin around him and rise to block him from view. The water was moving so fast it would rip flesh as if it was a serrated belt sander. Kakashi slid to a stop as he finished his hand signs. Water style. Shark frenzy no jutsu, five sharks of water shot from the river hitting the spinning wall exploding sending water into the sky. Water fell as Kakashi saw that Zabuza was no longer there. He jumped flipping over the giant blade as it tried to cleave him from underneath. Zabuza rose from the water and rushed towards Kakashi swinging the slab of iron down. Kakashi pulled out two kunai stopping the blade before it made contact with his hair. Kurinai watched as the two looking for the best time to cast only for something to shoot out the water. She rolled as a figure landed. Can't have you messing with their battle. So he made a water clone to keep me company. Great. Water clones were immune to chakra based genjutsus due to the chakra passing through them. On a scale they rank number two on the elemental clone list. Their benefits ability to move freely through water, in order to burst them one needs to break the surface tension, and besides genjutsu immunity if the controller has cage level of chakra control, they can morph their anatomy. The drawbacks they need to stay within controllable distance, divides the focus of the user, and needs jonin level chakra control to maintain. She pulled out a kanai on a chain that was decorated with a lot of colors. I have to thank Kuma-kun for being a test dummy. Kurinai thought as she began to spin it. Kiba and Shino, Haku moved left staying near the water as Naruto and Sasuke moved to engage. The demon brothers dashed towards the two genin in hopes of taking them out fast, so they could kill the one that peed on them. Shino and Kiba were not really teammates, but their instincts were good enough to tell when they were too close to stepping on each other's toes. Shino has worked with Kuma who has a modified Inazuka fighting style which is a free-flowing hit-and-run tactic. Shino was using the bugs to cause a distraction as Kiba landed a barrage of quick hits. When Kiba was close he caught a whiff of poison coming from their gauntlets, but Kuma's gift protected his body and if he was wearing the gloves and headgear he would be protected from head to toe. He could handle them without them. The bugs were clouding their vision and were draining their chakra. They tried swatting, but the bugs were the second smallest within the clan and the most durable. To kill one of them they would have to be caught between two objects. Shino ordered the bugs to get right in their eyes as they tried to rid themselves of the insects. Tunneling Fang was all the two heard as the younger brother gauntleted arm was clawed from his shoulder. The older brother heard the scream of pain and knew who it was. With Naruto and Sasuke, Naruto and Sasuke were good by themselves, but together they were at a disadvantage. 
Sasuke seemed still slightly shaken from Zabaza's killing intent and it didn't help he was in pride mode. As the hunter Nin dashed away the fake through some bonds keeping Naruto at a distance as Sasuke tried to land a roundhouse only to connect with the air. Tem you are not going to catch him, her. You're not fast enough. He is right. Both of you should give up. Haku said in a voice that did not help in the ongoing debate in Naruto's head on is it a guy or not. Morrison bonds were thrown in Naruto to deter him from getting too close ignoring Sasuke who felt like he was being toyed with. I don't see you doing any better mutt. He scowled at Kuma for his insulting his skills. Naruto showed his speed earlier and his iron chakra bloodline even though it is one of his bloodlines it is the only one he could rely on with Sasuke around. He showed he was a bigger threat to whoever this person was, but why isn't this person actually trying to hit him? If only I could be a little bit fause, Naruto mentally smacked himself as he made the sign. Four legs technique. Naruto became more feral looking as he dashed in close as the new burst of speed caught the fake hunter Nin by surprise, but the fake quickly recovered as the two now engaged in close combat. Naruto swiped with his bone clawed hand as it was met with the Sanban wielding shinobi. He became faster, Haku said while dodging a swipe from his hand. The hunter Nin tried to counter by stabbing a pressure point with a needle only to receive a kick to the midsection causing some distance as Naruto pulled the bee out of his glove. He brought the short blade to have it clash with the fake Senbon. Those things were stronger than they look. Sasuke was slower than the fake and Kuma as the two were fighting hand to hand. He couldn't stand being ignored and started shooting off fire jutsu. One question was on Naruto's mind as he let loose the fire, whose side is he on? Sasuke let loose a barrage of fireballs through fire style. Phoenix flower no jutsu forcing Naruto to dodge not wanting to slow himself down by armoring up so he could dash back into a fist fight. The hunter Nin's was slower than Naruto, yet the fake's reaction time was faster. The hunter Nin was dancing through the flames throwing senbons. Whoever this person was they had experience fighting faster opponents and more battle experience because those damn needles were getting too damn close as Naruto felt the intent to immobilize him. Sasuke could have noticed that he was only hindering Kuma if he cared. Sasuke just needed some more speed and he could show them both that they should bow to the might of the Uchiha. If I had my eyes all would bow to my might. Itachi will pay for his betrayal to the plan. Wh. Lan, was it? A jumbled voice called out stopping the volley flames as it echoed through his mind. As he held his head Naruto saw that the fire was no longer being shot pretty much at him, he made his move dodging the needles that were now grazing him. Naruto blade clashed again with the fake's needle. As they were locked they felt that neither of them felt intent to do actual harm. Is this really a fight? You are well trained, Kuma was it. You seem to have me at a disadvantage. What is your name if I may ask? Naruto applied more pressure with a smirk. You should give your full name before asking others. Haku stated trying to push the blade back to no avail. I don't want to be rude so my full name is Inazuka Kagaya Kuma, now you're. Naruto felt killing intent flow towards him. You. Are. A Kagaya. The voice was now clearly a girl which meant he was now facing an angry Kanoichi. She jumped back the needles in her hands became swords of ice. For your clan's crimes I will now end you monster. Venom was flooding the word monster and when she uttered it she saw Kuma's eyes glow crimson through his sunglasses. It was as if his iris was floating in a sea of darkness and hatred was flowing off of him. She calls me a monster. She wants to kill me because of things I was not a part of. Naruto was beyond pissed he had to stomach the villagers abuse if he wanted to live, but he would be damned if he would take it from someone outside of the village. Naruto was radiating killing intent. Kill this bitch. A voice called out for blood in his head which sounded like his own, but filled with so much hatred. Naruto's body gave off a wave of bloodlust before settling back to killing intent. Make her pay for those white mask bastards that took her away from US. Another voice called out it held anger, but didn't have that bloodlust. Fucking K-I-I-I-L-L-L-L her. Naruto dropped the bee having it stick into the ground. Bone spikes protruded from his knuckles coated in iron chakra making them look metallic. Chakra encased both his arms as he bared his fangs. Bloodlust flared again. Sasuke shook the weird feeling, but was then hit by Naruto's killing intent which reminded him of his own the day he lost everything which brought a thought to him. What happened to you Kuma? Then the mist began to come in. Mindscape, Naruto please calm down. 
Please Sochi don't give in to hate. She fell to her knees crying as her voice was still being drowned out by the banging. So much was taken from him because of her and she again couldn't comfort him. The happiest day of her life since being seal was when she could finally speak to her child when he was facing Hikari's mother and his mind became too chaotic for her to be heard, she was struck with fear it was back to the silence. Silence of being forced to watch him get hurt over and over again alone with her thoughts of it is all my fault. She was here again the only comfort was letting out her tears. Don't cry Ka-san. She stood and looking through the bars to see Naruto, but it was a four-year-old, white see-through Naruto. His voice held innocence the only thing throwing off the whole fell was the black tendril attached to his back. Rage and I are doing what needs to be done in order for Naruto-sama to be whole. Who are you, as in what are you? She asked wiping tears from her face. I am Bliss in this, the entity now known as Bliss held out a white orb. Holds Naruto-sama's happy memories. The orb floated into her hands. Well it is what we could get through the weakening mental seal. My time is up next time you will meet rage the boy faded as the tendril returned down the hall and back into the door behind the door did you give ma the memories a shadow figure spoke eyes glowing crimson yes and we made her cry small price in the grand scheme we will apologize after we stomp a new mud hole in donzo's ass i may be happiness but when you try to take naruto samas away you really piss me off sometimes you scare me we have to prepare and beware of that psychotic bastard Yami. He piggybacked on the anger and that's my thing. Kakashi and Kuranai moments earlier Kuranai was dodging the clone while spinning her weapon. It was confusing to the clone until it felt its limbs get heavy and it stopped moving. What the hell, was all the clone able to get out as she threw the kanai piercing the clone turning it into a puddle. Now to help Kakashi Senpei, she stated as she put away her weapon and began to run through some hand sign. Kakashi and Zabuza were on the water which would have meant advantage Zabuza if Kakashi wasn't just as well versed in water style jutsu as a Kirigakure shinobi. Zabuza was focused on Kakashi, but then his head turned slightly. Zabuza did the stance for the hidden mist no jutsu. Kuranai cursed as the mist was chakra infused which now meant she had to get close in order to cast a genjutsu effectively. I was a few hand signs away from ending this. Kuranai grabbed her weapon again and used her sensory skills to locate Kakashi still standing on the river, but the signature she could only identify as Zabuza was making a mad dash towards, Kuma's location. She then felt Kakashi move towards Tizuna and the girls believing Zabuza was going after the builder. Kakashi he is going after Sasuke and Kuma, she shouted as she ran to help her student. Naruto and Sasuke Naruto dashed towards his opponent swinging his fist connecting with the hunter Nin's ice blades. He is too strong. Haku thought as she tried to stand her ground, but was flew onto the river tumbling and sliding onto the surface until she stopped in a crouched position. Haku looked her blades as they were broken to the hilt. He can break my ice. Haku's eyes widened under her mask. Naruto was about to run after her until he heard metal scraping against stone. Naruto swung his fist connecting with the blade of iron shattering the tip as Zabuza but he was able to land a kick to Naruto's chest making him fall on his back as he was now top heavy. Zabuza raised his blade to cut the brunette boy in two, but had to jump back as a swarm of shurikens passed by. He landed next to Haku. Is that kid really one of them? I am sure. His nails when they elongated were not the same as his brother's and he is still bipedal after activating the same jutsu either because he can't use it to the same extent or his bloodline has altered it. Also, before his arm became encased in what I believe is an advanced armor jutsu spikes formed from his knuckles. Naruto stood up eyes were back to normal, but they became wide at how much she did see. She must be strategic type like the Nara clan who I have to stay away from. One of the reason you are useful. You are very observant. Zabuza stated as he looked at his blade as for the circle up was gone. The kid has some serious strength. But I definitely felt some wicked bloodlust from the kid. I can handle him Zabuza-sama. You just worry about the Jonin. Before he could say anything she dashed towards Naruto. He was about to stop her, but Kakashi appeared in front of him delivering a flying kick to his chest. No one tells Guy I used dynamic entry. Somewhere in Konohagakure a man with a bowl haircut started cry. Sensei. Why are you crying? A girl with buns asked with an annoyed look. These are tears of joy for someone has been inspired by my UO. He wasn't able to finish as blades rained from the sky. Hanada and Sakura, Sakura are you okay? 
Hinata asked as Sakura was sweating and swaying slightly. I, D don't know, she said as she was feeling drained of energy more than usual thanks to her mother. Hakaramaru took a sniff of Sakura. Nissan, she smells like Uncle Anko and Ka San, but doesn't look healthy. Kagemaru took a sniff as well. That's because she has been poisoned, little bro. I will go get two San Yu and Konami Chan try and get Hanada San attention. With that said, Cage raced off towards Naruto. Kiba and Shino, little brother, what happened? The older one asked in worry as he was still blinded by the bugs. They ripped off my arm. The younger one yelled as he reached blindly into his cloak and pulled out a vial, opening it with his thumb and splashing it on his wound. Pain shot through his body as the wound closed, but it didn't stop there. His body began to grow and change. Kiba and Shino watched in horror as the once human man became what could only be described as an abomination. Kakashi and Kurenai, another Zabuza water clone, was going after Kurenai hard. She was a distance fighter and he knew that. She was spinning her kanai again and it was taking longer to hypnotize as she had to dodge by rolling into its blind spots. She kept it spinning, but she needed to be in front. Kakashi was mirroring Zabuza's movement to the letter and was about to engage again, but both stopped as they heard a roar. The three John and all thought. That sounds like no creature I heard. Naruto and Sasuke Sasuke was more cooperative and instead of firing off unfocused attacks he was forcing the fake hunter nin into close combat but that didn't stop the kunoichi from throwing senbons. Naruto calmed down and dodged as more needles were thrown. As he was turning to face the hunter nin again, a cold fist connected with his face knocking his sunglasses and it hurt like hell. Naruto swung his fist as he felt the twinge and connected with the mask causing a crack revealing her brown eye. As Naruto looked into her eye he felt she knew pain similar to his. If Haku was not clouded by anger she would have noticed his, but their fight was stopped by the roar as well. What creature makes such a horrendous noise? Kagemaru appeared next to Sasuke. Tucson come quick we need help. With that said the pup raced back to his first location. Naruto turned back to see Zabuza and the huntress was gone. We need to help Hanada chan and Sakura ch san protect the bridge builder. Naruto yelled out and raced to them he caught a scent on the wind and had the feeling as if he knew this scent. Underground lab a day ago the clones took a big whiff and pulled out a lighter illuminating a small area. These are limbs, massive, decaying, limbs. They were examining the body parts moving limbs out searching for a body and they found one. The body was mostly intact, but it was cut open, a few organs were harvested, and the skin was completely gone. The organs that were left had tumors or were ruptured. The two that found. One of the clones pulled out a tape recorder and began to describe what it saw. Entry 1. Entered through structural opening finding limbs ranging from muscular covered in armor-like scales to massive the size of a full-grown adult on steroids, the clone paused as the other two brought it over after placing the body down in front of the clone they set out to look for the door. We found a nearly intact body. Skin and a few organs are gone as evidence of the abdomen being split open and ribcage pried open leaving the insides visible. Slightly taller than an average male adult close to 7 feet, very muscular, teeth serrated, the clone leaned in to look closer. And not by tool enamel still intact. Looking over the head the clone saw that the eyes were gone. Before the clone could record they heard begin to click and tumble as someone was beginning to open it. Killing their light the two clones were on two sides of the door. One was above the door and the other was on the side of the hinges. The door opened slowly as a male anbu his mask had a tree trunk at the top as roots covered the mask. He turned around to pull in a cart with more limbs as he pulled them in the clone behind the door grabbed him and strikes the back of his neck. The Anbu was knocked out as the clone above closed the door. Hurry and inject him. Pulling out a syringe sticking it into the clone's arm, and filling it with the clone's black blood. It began injecting it into the ANBU's neck making the ram sign it whispered, blood manipulation. Heart rupture no jutsu, the blood rushed to the man's heart causing arteries to burst. Hand me the tool, seals, and the camera we need to work fast. One clone reached into the bag pulling out what looked like scoop along with a small camera and monitor. Removing the mask after looking it over for the dead man's seal. Once the mask was off the clone caught a glimpse of a fading seal before it was gone on his forehead. The man's mouth was open that is when they noticed the seal on his tongue. Glad we are wearing gloves. The clone thought in unison. Pull out his tongue and saw that it was already tampered with. Q Chan. Remember this seal. I was already giving my full attention to you clones. 
I want to see if that jutsu works. We are done. The clones put the mask back zipping up his anbu gear. Turning on the monitor they saw themselves. A clone placed its hand on the corpse chest and held a single-handed ram sign and whispered, Blood marionette. Decaying puppet. The body jerked for a second before it began to stand. The clones fought the urge to scream it is alive. Underground hallway. The body was pushing the cart with the iron clone hiding within it invisible and hiding its presence. The body was moving based off of muscle memory. As they moved down the noises became louder and it was horrendous. The cart came to a stop as a voice began speaking. What took so long? You are three minutes slower than normal. Disposal The two shadow clones that were still in the disposal area were watching through the camera. One was sitting lotus style hands clasped together while the other held the screen in front of its face. Time to talk. Underground hallway, I had noticed a few more cracks in the supports. The corpse puppet spoke. Yes, this lab does not have many days left before collapsing, especially with these beasts thrashing about. We are almost done with testing on trash and we sent out a batch for field testing. The clone was about to make the puppet ask where, but decided to not to make the dead question its superiors in fear of raising flags. Q Chan. Why are they not making him ask where? It didn't take long for the clone to get its answer. They don't want to make it ask any questions in case it doesn't have clearance to do so. Guess I will have to find out where and what, but first I need to get out of this cart without making noise. The clone grabbed the rim of the cart and launched itself towards the ceiling. It caused the cart to squeak as the clone stuck to the roof. Still invisible the clone followed from above as they continued towards the noise. We are done with the formula and have moved on to other projects for the good of Konohagakir since the old fool let the monster out of his den. Why am I not getting angry about these insults? He is obviously talking about Gigi and Boss, but I feel numb to it not like I am used to it from Boss's experience. The clone began to look through Naruto's memories and realized Naruto only lashed out and became angered by anyone from outside the leaf such as many of the merchants. Pranks he pulled could have been harsher, but something made him hold back. Something is wrong and I will get to the root. Death to all root. Mindscape, death to all root. Did Yami just speak bliss? Asked a voice fill with worry and anger. Yes rage I believe he is talking to one of Naruto-sama's clones. Is that going to hinder us in our goal? No. I would kill Yami myself if it did although it would be pointless. It is actually a sign we will soon be able to make contact to Ka-san or Naruto-sama. All we have to do now is wait for an emotional trigger, but we have to keep an eye on Yami. Didn't you say we can possess the clones what if he does and goes on a killing spree? There are only two points in a clone's life when that is possible. If that does happen, then we take control of the other two and show him not to fuck with Naruto-sama's life. Reality the clone shook its head of the strange feeling as they were now in front of a large door guarded by two unmasked men. The puppet immediately bowed so did the masked man leading. You two are late. Explain yourselves. One of the men spoke letting his killing intent out. The decomposer noticed more cracks signifying we need to move up our evacuation date. We will inform the master, but this is the reason we chose this lab no one would risk a fight that could collapse the area. We have moved all main priorities to the second location along with project. Rebirth. We need you to pick up the pace moving our rats so we can scorch earth. The guard opened the door as he finished. The clone quickly went through with the two and seeing that the corpse puppet went left the clone went right. With the corpse puppet from the looks of the area it was the dungeon. The cells were dark, but something was in each one. In the center was a large table covered in blood with surgical tools to the side and a tray of vials filled with dark purple liquid. Three men in lab coats were having a discussion. We should work on beast type. Ogre next to finish a vial that will give a 100% chance of transforming into it. They are well rounded out in attributes of these creatures and have a better chance of learning. I concur we could make a true army out of them and they have the most variations. The rest seem good for only blitz attack due to short lifespans. One of the others spoke, hard to tell who, when they are all wearing masks. Agreed. Open cell 24 and bring out ogre variation brute. The sound of a cell door opened and into the light a massive 8 foot 1 tall beast with rough, scaly, gray skin. Teeth serrated fangs and claws that could tear through stone, an. The ogres are locust from Gears of War this one is a grinder, boomer no armor. It came to a stop in front of the corpse puppet taking a few sniffs and began growling as it grabbed hold of its arm. Get this beast of me. 
The corpse puppet yelled as it was lifted off the ground. Who are you? You wouldn't have been attacked if your blood was incorporated in the obedience seal as the rest of us involved in this project and our master. Lab disposal, shit, it must be our blood mixed it is reacting to. Q Chan, inform brother, tell him to find some evidence fast and dispel we will try causing a distraction. Okay I'm on it. Start piling these bodies at the door and pack up our important gear burn the rest, location is about to be known. With the puppet the puppet began convulsing as well as the beast as electricity coursed through them. Foreign chakra detected facility compromised. The words echoed through all their radios. The electricity made the beast's hand constrict crushing the puppet's arm. The monster fell unconscious hitting the back of its head on the table while the corpse puppet stood as the smell of its burning flesh riled the creatures in the cage. One of the men ran to a lever and pulled it hard soon every cell was engulfed in flames. The creatures cried out in pain. The blood from the puppet came back to it in the form of a whip as the other two men began running through hand signs. In unison they called the name of their jutsu, wind style. Great spiting serpent no jutsu. Two wind manifestations of giant snakes their presence created a vacuum sucking in the flames and ash. Their heads swayed back then snapped forward sending out concentrated jet streams of fire. Somewhere in the lab the clone had come upon a door that reeked of chemicals and blood that smelled extremely familiar. Producing a tiny bone at the tip of its index finger it began picking the lock. The puppet was exposed get some evidence and then dispel. Will D. The door began to open from the other side. Kill. The clone lengthened the bone as the door swung and the clone jammed its finger into the masked nin's neck. His reaction was fast as he kicked his assailant away. The masked shinobi began choking on his blood trying to gurgle out an alarm, but fell hard onto the unforgiving floor. The clone saw two more around a covered body. Kill all root. The clone's eyes became darker as if ink was dropped in the puddle of water. Bone spikes protruded from its palms. Mindscape, Yami just influenced the clone again rage. He is digging deep we can't block the bastard when the chance come. You do realize that calling him a bastard is the same thing as calling Naruto-sama a bastard. As far as we know we may have been born out of wedlock, but seriously Yami is going to start slaughtering we both know that these seals were the hardest on him. I know. Start setting up in the other clone while I set up in the puppeteer. With the puppet as the flames closed on the puppet it began running in an inhuman way as the sounds of its bones dislocated to move like a demented marionette. The whip of blood shot towards the door, but a shuriken cut it. The puppet leapt then noticed it was not zipping towards the exit as two kanai became embedded in its skull the puppet's head turned snapping its own neck to look at the doorway to see two more masked men. The fire engulfed the puppet burning the body, seals, and camera. With one of the intruders dealt with they stopped their jutsus. We have located the source of the foreign chakra to disposal. Get rid of that bee. Greened, the monster was up and angry grabbing the nearest root nin twisting his neck with its large hands. The nin that had just entered moved to end the beast. It smelled them closing and throwing the lifeless corpse at them, but they wasted no time cutting the corpse in two. On a human opponent it may instill fear and cause pause, but the creature rushed forward striking their sternums hard shattering their ribcages and punctured their lungs. The obedience seal should be in effect. The masked nin at the lever spoke as the beast turned slightly light now illuminating the seal on the nape of its neck to see a gash through it. The flames are still on use the jutsu again. The man's surviving colleague started the hand signs as a roar was heard from the cell next to him as the bars shot off. The man was crushed between two cell doors. From the flames emerged a larger creature covered in natural armor like skin and bone. It turned the only human left in the room the man took a deep breath as the creature barreled down holding a single hand sign. Explosive death no jutsu, the beast was a step away when the man exploded in its face. Lab disposal a minute ago, the puppets destroyed. The screen was static as the clone turned it off and placed it in the storage seal on its chest. Banging was heard on the other side of the door. They're right outside we need to dispel. Gears destroyed. Both clones held the sign to end the shadow clone no jutsu. Now, behind the mask the clone's eyes glowed a golden color, as the others glowed a fiery red. We have control and now we just need to find, boom. What the hell was that? Not our concern we need to get to that iron clone. We can either fight our way to him or find a detour. I say we fight these are root bastards. I would be more than happy, but we are in weak shadow clone bodies. Sure we have the reserves, but one hit and we are done. 
Unless we armor up and head out there. It may bring unwanted attention to boss, but can you really say it wouldn't be worth kill at least a few of them? They both started to hear the sound of electricity and saw a blue glow coming from the door. We better decide fast they are cutting through the door Bliss. Bliss was now put on the spot and was about to say transform so they could leave through the cracks, but then the memories of that night flashed through his mind and ran through hand signs as fast as he could. Wind style, Hawk Talons no Jutsu, Bliss began spitting out daggers of wind piercing through the bodies in the door. The root nin that was cutting through the door was ripped to shreds as the other five dodged to safety. The door fell into the hall with what was left of the corpses that were stacked against it. Inside was dark and the only thing the root nins could see were two pairs of glowing eyes. Bliss and Rage ran forward with the every step sounding of metal against stone. The five root nins drew their blades and prepared to attack charging them with lightning. As the two stepped into the light of the hallway two moved to strike them down. Blades clashed against their armor to the root nins shock the blades broke against the metallic skin of Rage. Bliss threw Kanai seemingly piercing their skull, but they switched with some limbs. The two appeared behind them. Rage charged at the three in front of him while Bliss attacked the two behind. The three nins' blades began to glow a brownish color bringing them down on Rage this time the blades didn't shatter, but they still were unable to cut through his armor. Rage gripped the neck of one of the nin hard he tried to grab one of the others as well, but they retreated a second after contact. A small sizzling sound was heard and felt by the root shinobi in his grasp as his throat felt like it was on fire. The other pulled out kanai they glowed three times brighter than the blades did. They're pouring their chakra into those things. The kanai came flying looking as if they were lightning bolts. Rage, move the nin to be his human shield placing his free hand on the root shinobi's chest channeling chakra to his chest. They struck the body, but didn't go all the way through. The nin tried to scream as his body caught fire from the electricity. Rage threw the body towards the two and they tried to cut the corpse, but the blade became stuck against the armored chest. Rage ran though hand signs, wind style, air bullet no jutsu, a blast of air escape Rage's mouth and as soon as it made contact with the burning corpse there was an explosion of fire causing the hall to collapse. Took you long enough Rage, and you did better? Rage looked at the two bliss face to see that they were cut into pieces. If Rage had to guess Bliss cut off their legs first, then the arms starting with the fingers, and finally cut open their ribcages. You're sick you know that right. I find no joy in what I did and you and I both know they deserved it. Bliss knew he made his point. Now let's find the Iron Clone. The two ran through the halls as fast as they could until they got to the proverbial fork in the road. The puppet went left so we go right, right? Rage there is a lot of blood or are you just oblivious to it? Rage began to see that there was blood like something was dragged through here to make Bliss point a roar was heard along with the sound of something collapsing. We go right, but something vicious came from the left, be prepared to fight. They came upon signs of a struggle and a gaping hole in the floor. Whatever happened something fell through he, roars were heard and a primal yell replied. Yami is down there I know his battle cry anywhere. You go there's a door right over there. WHO cares Yami is this way. The door is bent outward, there is fresh blood, and a body. We also have to make sure this mission is a success it will be something to keep Naruto-sama from seeing a Yamanaka for a psych evaluation on the fact there will be a gap in his memory. Go on without me I will catch up. Bliss leapt over the hole and quickly entered seeing three bodies littered with stab wounds inside, bone spears in two of them along with a bloody blanket. Yami definitely took over. Who could have pissed him off? Grabbing the blanket Bliss prepared himself to see, Mizuki? Minutes ago the Iron Clone charged quickly stabbing the first in the spine. Hands blurred as it continued to stab violently as the man screamed in pain. The second pulled out a kanai leaping across the room to kill the clone. Behind, bone spears extended from its back piercing the man, and shredding its shirt as the clone continued to stab the now dead shinobi. After the excessive stabbing the clone finally let the man drop and broke off the bone spears. Making its way to the covered body, seeing tubes carrying fluids to and from it. The clone gained back some clarity and was staring at the covered body its hand lifting the sheet to reveal a barely conscious Mizuki. Looks like he has been tortured. Where is his medical chart? Finding the chart was easy enough, but trying to make heads or tails of what any of it meant. Naruto didn't know much about medicine he could be a passable field medic, barely, but hospitals were completely foreign to him and by extension his clones. 
The clone placed it in its chest seal. Gigi can get it to someone. Now, what do I do, with this traitor? Kill, I should kill him for what he tried to do, but he could give Gigi some valuable info. Kill him, he tried to kill Uruka and boss, but. Fucking kill him. The clone's eyes went completely black letting the blanket fall back onto Mizuki. The bones extended from its palms again and the clone began stabbing the barely conscious man to death. As the clone was ending the traitor's life a doctor moved from the shadows to a cage. Hitting a switch the cage opened, attacked the intruder, a hairy beast lunged out. The clone turned to the beast as it was tackled. The beast snapped and made a sickening noise like it was trying to growl or bark. The clone easily tossed the beast off getting a good look. Anyway the clone looked at it the beast was a werewolf fairly large, but weaker than it looked. Its right leg was limping as it circled. There were patches of red on its cheeks and a large red patch on its chest. Wolf-like, red marks on its cheeks, large red mark on its chest, and it has a wounded right leg. Could this creature be Kuzan? Kill them both, black chakra began flowing off the clone and bloodlust was filling the room causing the beast to whimper and the doctor to freeze where he was. The clone launched Bones' spears pinning the doctor to the wall and tackled the monster through the door. Lifting the beast, and slamming its body on the ground multiple times weakening the floor and turning the monster into a bloody mess. Dropping the lifeless mass with its blood covered the floor. A roar gained the clone's attention as a larger beast with a scarred face came barreling down on the clone behind the beast was a slightly smaller similar creature dragging two bloody corpses. The clone was standing its ground on the weakened floor. When the set its massive foot on the floor section it gave way.